stop number three of the Crankworx World Tour and the Triple Crown of Slopestyle is on the line. Everything in the Slopestyle universe depends on what will happen over the next 90 minutes. Wait, what? Oh, right, okay. Uh, apparently there's been a change of plans. So, after an unwanted hiatus, Slopestyle is reloading in Innsbruck. Eric Fedko, the German technical terminator, is in the house. 2019 breakout star David Godziak, present and accounted for. The first ever triple crown of Slopestyle winner, American Nikolai Rogatkin. Nope, not here. But you know who is? 2019 Red Bull Joyride champ and winner at Crankworx Rotorua, Emil Johansson. Am I the only one who thinks 2020 really hasn't had enough champagne popping? Then let's do this. What was that? Slope style, people. This is what I am talking about live from Innsbruck, Austria. This is Crankworks Innsbruck, and wow, we had to move the competition early by one day. So it's kind of like Christmas is coming early right now. 14 world class slope style competitors on an iconic slope style course. We're getting a great look at that course right now. It looks like perfect conditions. The winds are low, and we're able to get this in before the rain storm comes so I think the stage is absolutely set for a ridiculous competition. I'm your host Cam McCall on camera live from the studios in Santa Monica California of course with travel bands we're not able to be there in Austria so a little bit of FOMO for us right now I'm joined by my brother and our slope style analyst Tyler McCall. Tyler we didn't have to sit on a plane for a long time and we have a gigantic screen right here we need popcorn this is going to be the best show on two wheels. I'm excited. I'm just happy we get to get a contest underway. It feels a little weird. It's uh, midnight California time, and these guys are uh, just starting their day, and they've got uh, quite the day planned ahead. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what, goes ha what goes down today. When you're talking about slope style in the year 2020, you're talking about two things. There's not enough events, and you're also talking about Emil Johansson, a guy who's going to be taking to this course. And I can't think of any better rider to give us a preview of this course. Let's go on board for our GoPro course preview with Emil Johansson. Hey, what's up? Emil Johansson here. I'm at Crankrook Slope Style 2020 in Innsbruck, and this is the GoPro course preview. Yep. Well, that's that classic chorus we know and love. It's so smooth. It's got everything from flat drops to lip down drops, and that four pack is hipped, which is always something that throws a curveball to those riders who've been training on straight trick jumps. These guys have ridden this course before, the majority of them, so they know what they're coming into. They know what they've been practicing, and uh, I think they've all got some tricks up their sleeves. So one guy who maybe is packing some tricks up his sleeve, but also a little bit of lactic acid in the legs is Thomas Lemoyne. He didn't get very much sleep last night because his night ended very, very late. He was battling it out on the pump track course where he took away a bronze medal. And so all these guys went to bed early except for one. Thomas Lemoyne, never afraid to put his name on the start list of multiple events at a Crankworks Festival. Here's how it shook down in the bronze medal matchup. So Lemoyne basically putting his bike exactly where it needs to be to carry speed. He had an advantage coming into this round right here and smooth through the finish line, made it happen, bronze medal, and then finally time to go rest up. These guys were out on the course incredibly early this morning. I think it was 7 o'clock, 7.30 local time. 
they got into practice. And there's a look at somebody who's really been shaking up the standings the last couple of seasons. In Whistler last year, the way we finished off the Crankworks World Tour in 2019, David Godziak was on the podium with a third place. Just a year ago here in Innsbruck, he was third place. So he's obviously looking to step up another spot on that podium into silver. But Rotorua, obviously the only slope style competition we've seen in the 2020 calendar, Eric Fedko was up on that podium. He's had a handful of third places himself. So those are two riders right there who are looking to capitalize on the fact that there's a couple riders from North America who are normally occupying that second and first spot who aren't going to be there. So hopefully guys like Eric Fedko and David Godziak are able to move up. One notable absence was last year's uh, Earlier this year, second place in Rotorua, Nikolai Rogakin, not able to make it here because of the travel ban. But this is a look at our start list, 14 world-class athletes. Really, I mean, we talk about how we're missing some athletes, but when you look at who we do have, we know we're gonna have such a ridiculous show. One name that really stands out to me on this list is Max Fredrickson. He's gonna be the first rider to drop. It's been a long time since we've seen him at a slope style stop, hasn't it? It has, and he's obviously a top caliber rider. He, uh, there's no shortage of all the tricks. He's always shredding, putting out the YouTube videos, the Instagrams, and uh, I think he's been practicing, had some time to reset, so definitely looking forward to seeing him back on course. Well, star studded field of 14 athletes here in our Crankworks Innsbruck slope style. Don't go away. We'll We'll be dropping them shortly. Experience live racing at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup in a whole new way. Athletes, profiles, and KPIs. Start lists and standings. Live stats and head to head analysis. Track information and obstacles. Keep up with your favorite riders. The ultimate interactive live experience exclusively on Red Bull TV. Do you want to meet your riders? The biggest event BMX has ever seen will happen next year in Tokyo. Here we go. Look at the height. Join the BMX elite on their hunt for precious points to represent their country for the first time. These last seconds are the ones that matter most right here. Clockwork 60 Fees BMX Freestyle. Now available on Red Bull TV. When you have found your passion, time and space seem endless. A cinematic journey from lush coastal jungles to otherworldly landscapes. Join Brandon Semenuk, Emilio Hansen, and friends in an extraordinary adventure. Return to Earth, now available on Red Bull TV. My father was shot down in the Vietnam War. And ever since his remains were identified, I've been planning an expedition to search for the place where his plane went down and to discover the circumstances surrounding his death. Ultra-endurance mountain biker Rebecca Rush on the trail of her father's fate. No way. Blood Road. He is one of the best street BMX riders in the world. Courage Adams. Born in Nigeria and raised in Spain, he discovers his roots and rides with the legendary Lagos BMX crew. For me, BMX is just something I really, really love. Encouraged. Now available on Red Bull TV.
competition live from Innsbruck, Austria. It's all about slope style. Taking a look at the last minute preparations. The riders are getting on course right now. A day early for this competition, but not a minute too soon. The world has been waiting for slope style long enough. It's been six months since Emil Johansson stood on the podium of Rotorua to start the 2020 season. And we're excited to be able to continue right now. Star studded field of athletes getting last minute preparations underway on this Crankworks Innsbruck slope style course. 14 of the world's best slope style competitors. Obviously some names missing, but so much action to come here. Expect to turn another chapter in the world of slope style mountain biking. Emil Johansson absolutely on a tear. Can he make it three slope style wins in a row? The wait is over. We're about to find out. This is Crankworks Innsbruck slope style, and it starts right now. Bringing people that are passionate about a sport that we all love, bringing a community together to hang out. And that's a great work thing. Some guys are just impossible to beat nowadays. It's technical, it's fast, it's uh, what I like. <laughs> Maybe I'm going sometimes too much over the limit, you know? This is like a feeling that I've never really felt in bike racing before. Rush and that's it. Goal would definitely be a win. Crankworks Innsbruck slope style getting ready to drop our first athlete and I am beyond excited to see him take to this course. This is a guy who was climbing the ranks in slope style competition. He's more dedicated than anybody out there. He spends six days a week in the gym, but he's been battling injuries. He's been dealing with points freezes, trying to get back on tour. It was one thing after another. He was an alternate coming into this event, but Jakob Wenzel had an injury in practice. So Max Fredriksson from Sweden will be the first rider to drop. And you know he is so hungry. Tyler, I've been following his YouTube videos, watching what he's been working on, and I definitely think that this is something that he's not going to take lightly. This opportunity has been years in the making. So slope style competition, if you're new to this, let's explain what it's all about. How do things work here, Tyler? Each riders get two runs and uh, they're scored by a star-studded field of judges and uh, best run counts. So obviously not a typical world tour this year. We did have the event earlier on in the spring in Rotorua to kick the season off. If you think about it, it was supposed to be three stops. We only missed one of them, the granddaddy of them all in Whistler. But this is the way slope style works. It started out in Whistler in 2004. It's kind of like skiing and snowboarding. You get two runs, the judges score each, you get your top score, you get ranked out. And usually we compile all the scores from the three events and we crown an overall champion. Last year that overall champion was Brett Reeder. He's absent from the field here. Obviously, he's a North American, but he was planning on taking a break from slope style this season anyways. Really opened up the door for some of these younger competitors to climb up the ranks. And one who's been really capitalizing on that, winning the last two events is Emilio Hansen. We have a start order that looks a little something like this. Emilio Hansen will be the last rider to drop. We'll kick things off with Max Fredrickson making it from that alternate list. Another handful of really big names on there, though, Tyler. And it's been such a long time since we've had a contest and all those guys have been working hard in their private training grounds and I think they're all going to bring things new to the table. So we're not really sure what to expect, but this guy right here, man, being a contest rider is not an easy thing. Max was quickly rising to the top and then was plagued with injuries, came back from those injuries and it's obviously, it's not an easy thing putting a run together. Um, and uh, it wasn't going his way, but from everything we've seen, he is more than capable of landing himself up on that podium. Um, so we're really excited to see him in the start gate here. Max Fredrickson, one of our favorite riders, one of the favorite personalities, just lands everything so clean and makes it look so easy. So I'm looking forward to watching this run right here. 
So Max Fredrickson back on the start list. Let's see if he can earn some of these points. It's been years since we saw him drop in. What does he have for us, Tyler? Starting out with a 360 off the flat drop. Backflip bar spin and tuck no hander on the first jump. So he's getting all the combos in there. Nice truck driver to inward table. Slow double tail up on that first left hip there. Now those jumps are slightly hip. First one's a left hip, second one's a right hip. I like that old school seat grab Indian air. Going up, 360 tuck no hander, great extension on that. 360 double tail up. That was great to see out of Max Fredrickson. Landing a perfect run, everything was done flawlessly. And that's exactly what he needed to get these points and yeah. stay back on tour. Wow, this is gonna be a crazy event. You know when the first rider drops and puts down a hammer like that, it's definitely going to inspire everybody else in the field. Let's take a minute to savor this run in slow motion. I've been watching all of his social media content, and these are the tricks that he's been practicing. So I gotta imagine this is the dream run for him right here. But with this being a best run counts out of two opportunities format, he's got some room to wiggle around and try some crazier stuff in his second run. That run was just clean. It was typical Max Fredrickson. We know he has some bigger trips he could throw in there, but I think that was a really wise move, being the first rider, first run, just getting something on the books, something on the scores. And uh, now he's got something to work off of for run number two, but I'm curious to see where that's gonna land him. So execution is a category on the judges' scorecard, among other categories like trick selection, amplitude, flow, overall impression, but his execution was spot on. The judges awarding him a 79, so just outside the 80 mark, judges giving themselves some room to fit scores for the rest of the 13 competitors, but a smile on the face of Max Fredericks, and he did his job today. Now he gets to sit back and see what the rest of the competition has and how much he'll have to wager in his second run. But moving things right along, the second rider to take to this Crankworx Innsbruck slope style course here today. Out of Italy, Diego Caverzasi. And when we talk about Max Fredrickson, we talk about execution and precision. When we talk about Diego Caverzasi, we gotta talk about crazy unique trick combinations. And that's the thing, he brings a different approach, like backflip cliffhanger. I don't know if we'll see one of those today, but that's one of my favorite tricks. It's gotta be one of the scariest things, one of the last positions you wanna be in on your bike when you're upside down but Diego always bringing originality into his runs here. Huge front flip on that first jump. He almost went out of frame. Looking clean so Oh, far. the wind. Oh, Diego Caverzasi getting wind blown from a side wind, tail whipping off of that cannon log. It was a crazy perspective there via our FPV drone. But that is a bummer. That trick, Tyler, you are very vulnerable to side wind when you're off the side of the bike and the bike is backwards, aren't you? Exactly. It's one of the most helpless feelings. The amount of times I've skipped my head on the ground because of getting caught in the wind while doing a tail up on a feature like that. Uh, very familiar with it, and uh, it's a scary thing. So he's going to be frustrated, but he does have a second run. And uh, definitely not the way he pictured his first run going, but luckily he'll have another shot at it after these uh, next few riders work their way down the course. So that's a shame because obviously Diego Caverzasi had big plans there. We didn't get to see whatever the combo he was planning on the last jump. You know that would have been massive. Let's get a look back, see if we can figure out what happened here on the cannon. We were on board with that drone angle, but the amplitude on that front flip on the second feature, he almost took the drone out. That was, that was a huge front flip. Okay, next up in the start gate, a rider who has definitely been cr climbing the ranks, similar scenario as Max Fredrickson in the sense that he's showed up to a lot of these Crankworks events on the alternate list, waiting for the opportunity to shine. He has that opportunity right now, and he's had a new focus. He just posted a video with a brand new training compound. He put a lot of work into building that and his riding is looking on point. Tom Eisted on course. Starting out with a flat flip on that feature there. So, so far, big move right off the bat. Tom eisted has got a lot of tricks in his bag. He's been on tour, off tour, always so close to climbing his way on full Here we time. go. Perfectly over rotated purposely on that hip. Oh, wow, I yes. really like that link right there. Nice flip tuck oh. out, oh my gosh. Tom, I said holding it together, somehow keeping the train on the tracks and finishing off that run with a front flip on the final jump. 
There are okay. so many instances there where the speed was a little bit wrong. And you know, a matter of inches, if he came up oh, one inch shorter into the whale tail, that run would have been over. And I think oh, that there was some improvisation there. I'm guessing he had a different trick plan on the last jump, but somehow Woo! just didn't get buckled, landing strange out of that whale tail, took a couple pedals and finished that run out, salvaging it with that front flip. But this link on the four pack, Tyler. So cork 720 on the first one, which he had to purposely over rotate because it is a hip. And then into that purposely slightly under rotated cash roll on the second one. So that was a really, really cool link right there. Cork 720 done on a rearward axis and then a cash roll done on a forward axis. Um, really dialed those in on the hips. That's not an easy thing to do. And then this right here, he gets the flip tuck out. Great extension. I want to believe he had something else planned for the last jump. Look at the landing here, though. I think this is why, like, he almost kind of Came lost unweighted. traction. Lost a little bit of speed and then was able to push through on the front flip there and gain a little extra distance that he lost, um, losing that speed out of the whale tail. So that was a good veteran move right there, changing up his plan and just uh, finishing a run. So. See, that's something that's really important in slope style, and that's something you don't see out of a lot of the riders, is the ability to kind of maintain composure and improvise a little bit. You have this run in your mind, and you play it over and over and over the night before the event, the morning of the event, and if something doesn't go your way, the ability to kind of just reach deep down into that bag of tricks and pull something out that's possible to do with the speed given. So Tom Eisted salvaging that run. The score to beat is going to be a 79 held by Max Fredrickson. <sighs> Max Fredrickson's run was just so spotless, so I got to imagine Tom Eisted won't have enough to move into the lead here, but it'll be a nice placeholder that he can improve upon in his second run. We're waiting for the judges to decide. They're obviously looking at replays, deciding what to do with this run. A lot of big moments, but right here, Kind of a tough camera angle, but I think it was just a straight backflip, which is obviously going to hurt him. There we go. And a little bit of a case. So the spotless run of Max Fredrickson is probably going to hold tough here, but this is a pretty heavy move off the cannon. Got to be one of the more scary things you can do on that, to just lean forward and chuck a front flip off that cannon. It's a long way down to the flat bottom. I know he was stoked on doing that one. We saw him posting videos of that from practice. And uh, man, that one must have felt good to get out of the way. Landing that perfect too. And then those, yeah, that link on those hips right there was great. So definitely looking forward to seeing what he's gonna have for run number two. That puts him in a second place with a 69.66. So he's got something to build off of here. Yeah, second run, if he can really lean hard on that great combo in the four packs, but then just brush up the rest of the course there. Definitely an opportunity to move up. But back to the top of the course, we're taking a look of our next competitor, Tim Bringer, another Relative rookie in the field here. He was the 2019 season's rookie of the year. He found himself in Rotorua dropping into the slope style competition. Great run. Ended up scoring 10th place. But when I was asked earlier, who's kind of a wild card here that can impress people that, you know, if this was a fantasy event, maybe he wouldn't cost that much to put on your team, but he definitely could pull something out of nowhere and shake things up. Tim Bringer on course. I feel like we haven't fully seen what he's capable of yet. Wow. In a Crankworx run, that right there. Tail up, start, drop, a big cash roll on the biggest jump up. Oh, Backflip yes. tail up on the cannon. All right. All right. We're seeing it right now. Double tail up on the hip. Things are looking really smooth for Tim so far here. Triple truck driver. This is a big run. Backflip, tuck no hander up. Truck driver down. He landed perfect. Let's see what he's got. Lined up for this last yes. jump. Double Bringer brings it home. Come on. Wow. Finishing that run with a double flip is exactly what he needed to do. We've kind of thought of this guy as more of a loose cannon until this moment right here. I was watching his Instagram clips and I was thinking, you know what? This guy is kind of polishing up his game. He was bringing some new tricks and also the ability to squeeze the combos in. Things like the triple truck instead of just a double truck or a single truck. And right here, that combo, the backflip tail off the cannon, it was all executed with precision as well, wasn't it? That was a run we know he's capable of. We've seen him at some of the smaller FMB stops across Europe over the years. And uh, he's just got crazy combos. He kind of strikes me as a guy who has all the tricks. And it's just 
what it takes is just linking them all together in a run. Here we go here. It would be easy to just get one bar spin there or two. He goes all the way around for a three. And when you have a run that has such spotless execution, when the judges are really crunching the numbers and looking back at these slow-mo replays, it's something like squeezing that extra bar spin that might just inch him up another extra point and that could really help him in the rankings after we've gotten all 14 of these riders down the course. But there's really no faults in this run. I'm looking for something to kind of nitpick. I'm not nothing. seeing any holes, and I got to believe that is the exact run that he was hoping for in run number one right there. Okay, so let me ask you this. Right now, Max Fredrickson is holding the score to beat 79. I feel like there's more bangers in this run from Timothy Bringer and he really didn't slip pedals or anything. If Max Fredrickson's strength was the spotless nature of his run, where do you, do you think this is gonna be enough to go into the lead? My personal opinion, I think it will, and I think he might be able to hold the lead for a little while with that run, but I'm not a judge, and I'm glad I'm not a judge, because that's not an easy job. Look at that, an 85.33, Tim Bringer grabbing that number one spot right now. That is a very high score from the fourth rider to drop. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, we've got a ridiculous list of riders to go, though, but he might be able to hold on to that for a little while. If I'm Tim Bringer, I'm hoping that I can hold on to that and tell our final five riders and really battle it out for a podium spot. The flip whip on the cannon, too. I forgot about that until right now. That was a huge run. I mean, doing a backflip combo off of the cannon is so difficult because you don't have a radius lip to be able to help you aid in that rotation. But back up to the top, next rider out of Germany, Lucas Knopf, 24 years of age. A rider who has such a huge following on YouTube and also a German-speaking rider. If you're joining us and you're a Lucas Knopf fan, bear in mind that we are broadcasting this in multiple languages, German being one of them, so find that feed. Lucas Knopf on course. Oh! Wow, massive backflip bar spin and tail. Now, I've seen some videos of Lucas riding this course in his off time. Being that it is one country over, he gets to come here and ride it and train. Triple tail whip on that hip. Huge move for Lucas Knopf. Linking that into a 360 tail whip. Backflip up. Maybe landing a little low there, but able to carry the speed out with a double truck driver. Wow, no way. Lucas Knopf with a ridiculous run. This will be a fun one to review in slow motion. I mean, he started out at the top with that huge combo, the backflip bar spin to tail, but then finished it off with the backflip tail up to bar spin. Gosh, that was another big run. I have a feeling that's gonna preface what we're gonna see today. It's just insane runs. That's I think it's gonna be a good day. That's what delivers, man. <laughs> I was not expecting him to slip that last bar spin on the last jump, too. That's that going right to be heavy there. there. Awesome. Triple tail up. The only thing I could fall here, he has huge tricks. He's pedaling in between every feature. I know the judges, if it is one of those days where there's just multiple banger runs that are spotless, they're going to start to look at who's carrying speed most efficiently. Later on in the day, we'll see Thomas Lemoyne. He's a rider who always scores points for pumping and not squeezing those pedals in. But you also have to weigh everything out equally. The fact that the magnitude of these tricks is so high, those combos, and then that triple tail whip. This right here, he rolled this one pretty far over his shoulder. Looked like he was on slightly a different axis than normal. So I thought maybe that was just gonna be it. And then somehow catches the bike and slips that bar in there. I can't remember if it was Innsbruck here last year or Rotorua. He flip whipped the last jump and you could tell he wanted to throw the bars so bad but yeah. wasn't able to get it. He was shaking his head. So that's why he was so happy to land that after a fully packed run. I mean, after you've done so many tricks, the difference in the score by squeezing that bar spin in before touching down for the final jump is going to be massive. Will it be massive enough to upset the 85.33 currently held by Timothy Bringer in that top spot. Look at that. How, many, how much higher? 6.33 points higher. That's how much Tim Bringer beat Max Fredrickson by. So that run was so strong. Lucas Knopf, what will the score be? Score coming in. Oh, look at that. Going into second place with the 83. So Max Fredrickson getting bumped down one more position as Timothy Bringer holds on to that top spot. Nach dem zweiten.
Getting a first run score in the low to mid 80s is never a bad thing. So these guys definitely starting things off how they wanted. But as we get further and further into our field, we may see the scores go up even higher. You never know. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of banter at the top of the course there from Crankworx General Manager Darren Kinnaird. As we look at this youngster, age 24, out of Sweden, Alex Alonko. He has stood on a Crankworx slope style podium before. And this guy, just another piece of this invading Swede clan that's been just completely annihilating the competition in slope style the past couple years. Alex Alonko with a little bit different approach than some of his fellow Swedes, but definitely a guy who can score high here. Let's see what he's got. So Alex likes the opposite trick, starting off with an opposite 360 there into a big front flip tuck no hander. Now we're gonna see him spinning to the right with a 360 tail up off the cannon. We haven't seen that one out of him yet, I don't believe. Triple truck driver. Wow, transferring pretty far to the right on that cork 720 on the hip there. Recovering with a double bar spin up. 360 down, he's got one more jump here. Opposite, yes. Cork 720. Oh. <laughs> so now that's when we see some different things coming into play with scoring. So he was doing tricks both ways. Most of the other riders we've seen so far were doing things in their natural direction. So that's one of the nuances about Alonko's runs that are different than the other riders we've seen so far. One thing that stood out for me on that run, and I know the judges are going to be thinking about this, was how spotless that opposite Cork 720 was on the bottom. You can get away with being a little bit sloppy when it's your opposite direction, and you've already complemented it with your regular direction. But he was absolutely perfect on that final jump. That triple truck right there, clean as could be. And this next jump, you almost missed the landing. Yeah, his opposite Cork 720 was almost cleaner than his regular. But this one, a hard one to judge here, because it is a hip. So he's got to dial in that angle of the landing and make sure he's on path. We thought he was going to miss to the right oh. there for a second, but he still had maybe 10 inches to work with and was able to maintain speed into that whale tail. I mean, the amount of speed you lose by just being two inches short is substantial. Do you think he might have had something else planned for the step up into this whale tail? If he did, that was a good recovery because, uh, yeah, he didn't, didn't look like he had much air time there, but was still able to sneak in two bar spins. So not a complete throw away there. And then the last jump is, I'd say, the biggest move of his run. We've seen him do it in pass, and it's worked out great for him. The opposite Cork 720. So Cork 720 is hard enough, upside down, making a complete spin in the midst of that backflip, but doing it your opposite direction. And that could not have been any more perfect to end that run right there. <laughs> So this is a classic course here, one that the riders can train for. Alex Alonko is a rider who trains very hard back home in Sweden. Riders like Max Fredrickson and Emilio Hansen have been building training compounds, and they all kind of train together. And a lot of them have been building features just like this, and it's kind of an undertaking to build a whale tail. 15 foot gap, four and a half meters between the takeoff and the landing of the step in. You're now hanging out 14 feet in the air. Make sure you don't fall off of this thing. Wouldn't feel good. And then a lift down out, a step down feature where the takeoff is higher than the landing and it's got a kicker to get you there. So about 24 and a half feet long, 7.5 meters out of that. Tricking those step down features always scores high because it's more difficult to do when you're falling out of the sky. The score in for Alex Alonco, a 75.33, he slots into fourth place. All right, so we've had six riders drop here. The next at the top to try his hand at this Crankworx Innsbruck slope style course will be Switzerland's Lucas Hoopert. Lucas, a youngster, looked like 20 years of age here, but this guy definitely, definitely keeps himself busy in the off season, doesn't he? Red Bull Rookie of the Year 2018. We've seen him a few times on tour and he Definitely impresses us. He's got a deep bag of tricks. And he seems to be one of those guys who just keeps learning more and more and adding things to his bag.
Truck driver off the start drop there, so a big move into oh. a front flip bar spin. So right now, he's looking pretty darn good on run number one here. 360 Jeez. tail up. Wow, he landed that so perfect. Somebody's been busy. Backflip tail Cork up on the hip. Seven, keeping it composed onto the Cork wheel. Oh, seven, man. Oh, the key. He's trying to carry that speed all the way through. <laughs> 360 down whip. He is not taking it easy here. Yes. 360 out. One more jump. Oh, man. No way. <laughs> Oh my, you know what? As Lucas Hooper has definitely cranked Woo! up the banger meter here. We've seen him put down impressive runs, but he's got so many new tricks this year. That was exciting. I like the energy of that. He was pedaling between features, but to me, I don't know. It made it more exciting. You didn't know what he was going to come up with on the next jump. And that last trick, he landed that kind of like in a, in a trials stoppy position. I don't think he put a foot down or anything, but um, that was a great run out of Lucas right there for run number one. I can't wait to see a replay of that cash roll on the final jump because it was so snappy. And there was a few times in this run I thought, all right, well, he just tried something outside of his comfort zone. This is where this run will end. We'll just have to watch him get back up there and try it again. But he pulled everything off. I think that says something about this course here. The fact that you can have tiny little near misses, but then just keep rolling. Grab a couple paddles. Move on to the next banger move. <laughs> he packed a lot into that run right there. So much. Pedaling all the way into that, but still getting the 360 down whip up. Wow, here's that landing. <laughs> Way to hold on to that one right there. Wow, Lucas Hooper. Now this will be interesting because this was a run full of bangers, kind of similar to the run we saw from Timothy Bringer. I feel like Bringer still had a higher level of difficulty on his tricks, but this is this is right there. I feel like we could see this one slot into a podium contention. Oh, good. A slow-mo of this cash roll. This was crazy. Watch that back tire lock up to initiate the forward rotation of this corked out 720. And look at this, just the air awareness. I mean, his brake was already on, I suppose, <laughs> luckily. So foot coming off a little bit there. I think the judges are going to love the level of difficulty. They might be wanting him to clean it up a little bit in his second run. Judges taking their time with this one. <laughs> what will the score be for 20-year-old Lucas Hooper? Where do you think this is going to slot, Tyler? Here we go. Looks like. We're getting closer. There we go. 77 is the score for Lucas Hooper. He moves into that fourth position. So not bad. And like you were saying, he's definitely got some room to clean that up. Clean up the few cases he had on the landings and the pedaling up into the next features. And I think he could gain a lot more points out of that run right there. He had some big moves. You always wonder what their strategy will be for the second run. In some cases, you go, OK, like Max Fredrickson, he's going to have to do a harder run because he couldn't have cleaned it up any more than it was already clean. It was perfect. But then a rider like Lucas Hooper, OK, cool. Same tricks, just clean them up. Max Fredrickson hanging out in that bronze medal spot right now. Timothy Bringer still holding on to that lead. But we're about halfway through the field of 14 here in our Crankworks Innsbruck slope style. Of course, the final rider to drop will be the man who's won the last two Crankworks slope style stops, Emil Johansson. All slope style fans are on the edge of their seat to witness that. Crankworks Innsbruck slope style. More runs coming your way after the break. Experience live racing at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup in a whole new way. Athletes' profiles and KPIs. Start lists and standings. Live stats and head-to-head -head analysis. Track information and obstacles. Keep up with your favorite riders. The ultimate interactive live experience exclusively on Red Bull TV. When you have found your passion,
Time and space seem endless. A cinematic journey from lush coastal jungles to otherworldly landscapes. Join Brandon Semenuk, Emilio Hansen, and friends in an extraordinary adventure. Return to Earth, now available on Red Bull TV. Fear. A constant companion that even the mountain bike elite have to deal with. Your mind just starts kind of playing tricks on you because you can't do anything. Delve deep into the psyche of the athletes and get to know one of their biggest driving forces. Reverence, a journey into fear. Now available on Red Bull TV. Martin Söderström and Emil Johansson team up to let the good times roll. Today is the day. Ride with the Swedes. Now available on Red Bull TV. Seven riders left to go here in the first of two runs at the Crankworks Innsbruck Slope Style. Of course, a little bit different vibe on the venue this year, but we're just happy to be dropping riders and pushing the sport of slope style mountain biking. No crowd on hand, but you know what? In the middle of a pandemic, we're having a mountain bike festival and we're happy about that. I'm your host, Cam McCall, alongside my brother and our sport analyst today for Slope Style, Tyler McCall. And we've already seen some ridiculous riding, haven't we? We have, especially from some of the new faces there. And uh, Timothy Bringer, we knew he was capable of some big stuff and he really delivered. So clearly he's been working hard throughout this pandemic downtime. Ooh, I like what I see on screen right now. Paul Couder, the French rider, who obviously is an accomplished slope style athlete, but you know what? His skills transcend what the slope style course can allow him to do. He's got so many creative video parts on the web. And I'm always interested to see what his approach will be, how he will interpret a slope style course. Right now, we're watching these flags blow a little bit. We hear Paul Couder talking about the fact that it's windy, and that's gotta be frustrating. You watch seven riders drop, and as soon as you get in the gate, those leaves start dancing. That's what I mean about how it is not easy to be a contest rider. There's so many variables that you cannot control, and especially when you watch seven people get perfect conditions down the course, and then you're ready for your turn. You get in the gate and that wind's blowing, man, it'll play tricks on you. He's not thinking. an easy position to be in, that's for sure. It's tough too, because one rider drops at a time. It's not like a surf contest heat where, well, you're in a heat with people who are riding in the same conditions as you. It's been calm and now it's not, but Paul Couder will be judged against all the rest of the riders like Timothy Bringer, who's hanging out in that first position. It's whatever I want. No. So Paul Couder kind of waiting for the right moment to drop in. Luckily, it's a pretty quick course here. So if you get a lull, hopefully the lull lasts long enough to where you can get top to bottom. But this competition was moved one day early to try to beat the incoming storm. There's going to be sorry, rain tomorrow, which is the day we were supposed to be dropping these riders. So luckily this is a course that a lot of these riders are very familiar with. Otherwise having one day less practice can definitely be daunting. But Paul Couder is going to have to try to put together the best run he can under these circumstances he's given now with these windy conditions. Such a hard position to be in. You know you're on camera, everyone's wanting you to drop, but you want your best shot, you want the best conditions you can possibly have. So that's what he's doing. He doesn't want to make a rash decision and drop in and get a wind gust and have one of two runs be a wash. So we hope things mellow out there for Paul Couder. Well, trying to find the silver lining here, 
considering the runs that we've seen right now, seven runs have dropped so far. Majority of those have made it to the finish line, which has been good. That top score to beat an 85 by Tim Bringer. We said it was going to hold on for a while, and it has. But look, Paul Couder dropping in, starting off with a nice flat drop flip on the first feature. We missed what he did on that next jump there, but it looks like he's holding things together. Wind doesn't seem to be affecting him too much. Yes. That was a unique rotation there, kind of an old school 720. Oh, oh no! Wow, going for an opposite 720. <laughs> Wisely hitting the eject button. Looked like he was going to come in quite a bit under rotated. Not sure if the wind had a part to play in that. Even if it didn't, just knowing that there is wind there can play such a toll in your mind. Completely change your approach. Well, we've seen year after year on this course. A link that has scored really high on that four pack, those two jumps in a row, is the Quirk 720 linked into a Quirk 720 the opposite direction. That's what Paul Couder was going for right there. You really gotta commend the ability to fall out of the sky right there, pop up uninjured. For these guys to get on the level, to be in this competition, they have to be so good at riding, but not only that, they have to be so good at efficiently crashing so you can pop up and get ready to head back to the top of the course, take your second run. Luckily enough for Paul Couder, this format means he does get another opportunity. It's a little bit of time to fix up his bike, brush the dust off, and hopefully it'll be a little less windy for his second run. Now, I never thought I would call a 720 an old school maneuver, but the way everybody's doing them now is more of a backflip cork 720. And he was doing that on a standard 720 rotation, just a little bit different. A little bit more scale free here. The course these guys are riding is big. If you stood there in person, you would really appreciate it, but we'll try to quantify it a little bit. 13 and a half feet tall, these lips, that is over four meters tall. You figure the lip is higher than the rim of a basketball hoop. So that's how these guys are able to catch so much air. Look at him kind of hook his foot as he's spinning toward that front foot, getting a little bit of leverage there. This is at the moment where he realized he's gonna have to abandon ship. I can't even watch it. I've got a bruised heel right now and watch those feet hit the ground so hard. So impressive he was able to pop up so quickly from this. Look, I think he tagged a little bit on this first regular 720. Yeah. So he lost a little bit of speed there and that could have been all it took to keep him from getting the full rotation on that opposite 720 right there. That's it, if he had just a little bit more speed, he would have been snappier in the initiation of that rotation. He most likely would have been able to pull it around. But commendable effort there for Paul Couder, who unfortunately encountered a lot of wind as soon as he entered the start gate. One more chance for him. The next rider in the gate is, man, he can't even, talk about slope style without talking about this guy. He's been a fixture on the scene for so long. Thomas Jeannon, the Belgian rider currently residing in France, a part of this bubbling French slope style scene. Guy who has won a crankwork slope style all the way back in 2012. One of the most stylish riders in the game. Execution is a big part of how Thomas Jeannon has been so successful. He's the full package and he knows what it's like to win one of these crankwork slope styles. Granted, it has been a while, but he has been close many, many times since his win in 2012, I believe. But one of my favorite people to watch, he's got all the tricks, he's got the style, he's got the fluidity, amplitude, full package, lots of experience. I think that experience is, is key. He's done so much in slope style, but also just this feeling of sitting up in the start gate with wind. He's one of the few slope style riders who also still does rampage. And as you know, Tyler, hanging out at the top of a mountain with strong winds, you never get used to it, but that experience definitely comes into play here. And Thomas Janan, judging it's calm enough to drop in, Starting with an opposite 360 on the start drop, and I think that was a double tail up on the first jump. Classic Shannon style with that 360 table off of the cannon. Nice, big, lazy. Opposite 360, yes. berm slider, truck driver to tail. Big move on that next jump. Superman seat grab up. Ooh. Tommy G classic. 
Oh yeah, Thomas Janon finishing things off with that cash roll, but unfortunately coming up a little bit short. Luckily sliding out of that one unscathed, but a run that would have been a great place to start. Obviously going to result in a, a no score. It's gonna put all the pressure on his second run. He had so much style on that run right there. My favorite part, even though maybe it wasn't the judges, was the Corey Bowen, Mike Aitken classic style, 360, dangle a foot on that first hip there. It's just the simple things sometimes that look the best. And Thomas Janon can do the hard things, the simple things. And I like watching all of it. Some slow-mo looks back, Tyler. So he goes from a styly move on the jump before into a big triple combo there with a 360 bar spin to tail whip. So a little bit of a tag there, which slowed him down. He was still able to get this Superman seat grab into the whale tail. But if you notice, if we get the chance to see him jump out of this whale tail, the landing kind of caught him by surprise out of that 360 one foot can X up. And I think that's the reason he wasn't able to get that cash roll on the final jump. Take a look at where this back tire touches down. Little front wheel heavy, landing a little off course to the right right there. He needs all the speed he can get for this cash roll right here. He's got such a good looking cash roll on him. He just came in slightly under rotated and looked like he was a little short on speed right there. But luckily he was able to get out of that relatively unscathed. Frustrating end to run number one for Thomas Janon right there. I feel like we've seen Janon crash on the final jump way too many times than he cares for us to reminisce about. It can be a plague, man. Once you get in the habit of it, it's hard to it's a hard habit to break. It's Do you remember Matt one. Jones when that kept happening to oh, him? Oh yeah. But that moment right there, that's you chose your favorite moment. That was my favorite moment. Perfect Tommy G execution on that three table off the cannon log. A 47.33. He'll focus on his second run to better that score. But one of the riders who's representing that strong French contingent there, Thomas Janon, they're strong because they train together. It's a, it's a bubbling scene, and a big part of that nucleus is a rider who's going to be dropping in next, Thomas Lemoyne, the well-rounded rider. We saw him grab the bronze medal in the pump track just last night. And this is another guy who's been in this game for so long. Despite being just 24 years of age, he's seen this sport get harder and harder. Looks like he's waiting on the wing right like there, watching those Maxis contest. flags. It's a new, like, it's a new level every time. Like, every time the top three is getting better and better and better. And even for us that are like trying to make it to podium all the time, we see that it's always harder. And you do like, maybe your sickest run ever, and you're gonna end up fourth. And then next time, another better run, and maybe it's not enough. So yeah, I'm, I think the, the sport is going up pretty good. Um, I'm just trying to follow the, um, the level. <laughs> so Thomas Lemoyne with just shy of a handful of fourth places in the past, in the past two seasons. If anybody can speak toward this level just ever progressing it's this man right here thomas lemoyne he was fourth place at rotorua six months ago he knows what it's like to be on that podium he has not won one of these events yet he does have a bronze medal but with his execution and his deep bag of tricks and especially we're seeing a lot of riders have issues in their runs now this second half of the lineup I feel like a rider with experience like Thomas Lemoyne can smell opportunity. So we talk about this a lot with Thomas Lemoyne and I want you guys to watch how little he pedals when he works his way down this course. Using those pumping skills right there, no pedals, getting the speed for that huge cash roll. And he just makes things look effortless and that's what judges like to see. Back foot bar spin on the cannon there, coasting into that next jump. 360, double yes. tail whip, so clean, no pedals. Judges are taking note of all those little things that make a Thomas Lemoyne oh, run perfect. Fun flip up. 360 yes. tail up down. Now we've seen some big new tricks out of him. Yes, finishing things off with that front flip invert. Not a single <laughs> pedal stroke during this run. 
And I think this is exactly what Thomas Lemoyne needed to do. Slope style is all about playing toward your strengths. We're seeing some big banger runs from the field, but we're also seeing yeah, a, a lot of sloppiness. It's crazy to call it that because it's impressive enough to see them doing these tricks. But the judges are yearning for that moment right there. A very clean run with so many combinations. Let's look back. So now when you compare that run to some of the early ones that we saw where riders are pedaling between all the jumps, that's where Thomas Lemoyne really shines. He has the big tricks, but he also has perfect execution and uses the speed from the jump prior as he's going into the next one to just, it's called flow. And he has perfect flow and that's what the judges like to see. If your name's Thomas Lemoyne, this is exactly what everybody expects you to do. This is Thomas Lemoyne doing his job for the day. He basically checks that box of the rider who can put together a spotless run. And as soon as you think he's done tricking, he'll throw something else. You know, a three whip would have been great on that hip over rotating, but he brings around the combo, the three double whip, and he puts those feet on the pedals early. These courses are generally designed so that you can coast through straight airing, land perfect, make it to the next one. But he's doing that while doing 360 double tail ups and landing so clean and so perfect that he doesn't even have to take a pedal into the next jump. Finishing strong there. Like if you take a photograph of that front flip table, it's going to look good. You gotta have your run not only look good in full speed, but these judges have the opportunity to review it in slow motion and really put you under a microscope. Some big moves on the step down, difficult features as well. That backflip bar spin on the cannon and that three whip out of the whale tail. What will the score be? A 90! Thomas Lemoyne, the cleanliness of that run, knocks Timothy Bringer down into second place. The new score to beat, a 90. Wow. That is shaking things up right there, and that's what the judges like to see. Doing big tricks while making them look effortless. That's what wins slope style contests these days. Okay. That was the slope style version of like hand sanitizer, mask on, washing your hands for 20 seconds. That was very COVID friendly right there. That was one of the cleanest runs I've ever seen. All right, that's a tough one to follow, but the rider who's going to have to do that is Torquato Testa. The second half of our Italian contingent out here, we saw Diego Caverzazzi earlier not make a full run down. He had an issue on the third feature of the course, Torquato Testa. He landed himself a sixth place at Joyride in 2019. Fell off tour for a little bit, but he's back. He's strong. And it looks like the wind has been calming down a little bit too, opening up the door for Torquato Testa to make a statement. Torquato Testa seizing the opportunity of calmness on course. Truck driver off the start drop there, landing perfectly clean. Ooh. Backflip tuck no hander. Looked like he got a little off axis there. Maybe he missed a hand. Backflip tuck no hander off of the cannon. Wow. Oh, Opposite court 720 on the hip. On the knuckle. Too many straight flips though. Losing some speed with that big maneuver. He's gonna try to finish strong nonetheless. A nice cash roll out of Torquato Testa. And that just goes to show right there, when you're doing those big, difficult tricks in rhythm, how easy it can be to just lose a little bit of speed and have to straight air. It's definitely going to hurt that score. The fact that he flipped a few jumps in a row. I think he had two backflip no-handers in a row as well. The Torquato Testa obviously had a little bit more in mind for that run, but I do love the fact that he finished strong, didn't ever give up. Now he had definite strong points in that run, just a few mistakes. We heard him complaining about the win in the finish corral, which is definitely something can, <laughs> that can change your plans midway down this course. Opposite Cork 720. Biggest on the hit moment right in that there. run for sure. But you gotta wonder if he was doing the opposite Cork 720 on the first jump in the four pack, he was obviously planning on doing a regular Cork 720 at some point, maybe on the very next jump. But that would have been a really 
solid run if he was able to get what his plan was, finishing it off with that cash roll. But here, look, like you mentioned, this hip, he's coming around perfect 720, but he needs about 760, doesn't he? He's got some big moves in that run, so hopefully things will go his way for run number two. Now we've got quite a few riders that are relying on their second run to get a good score on this course out here today. All right, so Torquato Testa will focus on his second run to try to stomp that dream line and improve the score. We'll get a peek at what his score is right now. Obviously not going to shake things up too much. Into eighth place with a 57.66. Well, there's only two riders in the field today who have a podium in the 2020 season. The next one will be one of those riders. We're getting a look at him right now. The youngster out of Germany, Eric Fedko, third place earlier in Rotorua. Definitely one of the riders that all the other riders respect. He's got so much style. David Godzia commenting earlier on how Eric Fedko is one of his favorite riders to watch. Another rider that every time we see him, he just gets better and better. It's so true. David had this to say about Fedko. Fedko's style is my favorite. He has so much energy in his riding. And I know that's something that's been echoed both from current contest riders and riders who have hung up their slope style hats as well. They view Eric Fedko as somebody who's really carrying the torch for this sport. Not only doing the big tricks, but making them look good. I'll let you know. And unique combos, one of my favorite moves that he does is that 360 Superman seat grab Indian Air. I'm hoping we'll see that here. We've seen him do it on the second feature in the past. One of those riders who has so many tricks, you're always scratching your head wondering which ones he's going to choose, aren't you? Exactly, and we've seen some clips from practice doing some big tricks on unique features. So I think he is definitely capable Definitely capable of getting another podium today if things go his way. So I mentioned earlier, there's only two riders in the field here who've stood on a slope style podium in the 2020 season. Of course, Eric Fedko, third place at Rotorua six months ago. But the last rider we will see drop here, the man to be Emilio Hansen. But right now it's all about Eric Fedko dropping in. Truck driver to start things off. Big backflip table. Looked like he was a little short on speed for that big jump right there. 360 on the cannon. Looks like he might be throwing in the towel on this run. So I'm not sure if Eric Fedko had an issue on the second jump or if he was deciding to wave this run off from the beginning. But with the level of riding being so high right now, not getting a huge combo on that second feature, he felt like he wasn't going to get the score that he's capable of, decided to wave this one off. Luckily, he has another run to try to shake things up a bit, get another podium under his belt for this 2020 season. Surprising, though, to see him give up. I'd like to add, I think it takes a different mindset to do a crankwork slope style run without a crowd. It's just another factor. Some of these riders feed off of the crowd. Obviously, we're in a different situation here in 2020. Crankworks Innsbruck slope style. Maybe Eric Fedko thrives on the crowd. I don't know. Who knows? It would be crazy if Nikolai was here to see him ride without a crowd because that's a really good point you bring up. When have these guys ever done a slope style run in a crankworks festival without a crowd? All right, a little bit of perspective on how big this start drop is. Over two meters tall. I got to think the wind must have gotten him there because he had perfect pump on that start drop. He even got some pedals in before that big jump. It still looked like he came up a little bit short. What did that say, about 14 feet? I missed that grab. I think it was 14 feet tall right there. So imagine being up on the second story and that landing is so steep as well. That's one of the most difficult things about tricking that drop. Last year, we saw Brett Reeder doing the flat drop backflip tail up there. 
And it's a big drop, but it's almost not big enough for some of those big combo moves. And the fact that that landing is so steep makes it so conse consequential. So the throwaway run from Eric Fedko, good enough for 10th place right now. Obviously a handful of riders who are looking to use that second run to improve. We got two more left in the field. And the way they create these orders is the highest ranked riders go last. So David Godzik, a guy who's really been shaking things up on the slope style scene. He came from BMX. Obviously, you're familiar with that name, Godziak, because his brother was on the Crankwork slope style scene. Also, his brother is a rampage rider, but David Godziak coming from BMX, not just dabbling, he's got a gold medal in X Games BMX dirt. So it was exciting to see him kind of riding with his brother on the mountain bike, and one thing led to another. Next thing you know, he was doing qualifying events trying to get those points to be on the Crankworks World Tour with Big Bro. And uh, the Godziak name, whether it be Simon or David, there's been one in the field for so many seasons now. And regardless of which one it is, they always are podium threats. Godziak, huge result last season, finished off the year with a third place at Joyride. Here we go, David Godziak on course. Tail up to start things off. And a twister oh. on the first jump. Wow. Letting it all hang out. Run number one right here. Double tail up on the cannon. Some big moves so far for David Godziak. Oh, no way. Landing a little bit short on the 360 there. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Back on. Able to maintain speed. Oh. Front flip, tuck no hander up. Oh, no. Oh. A uh, big bail for David Godziak. That is a long ways down from the top of that whale tail down to where he is laying. David Godziak collects himself. Of course, we have medical staff on hand here to take a look at David Godziak. I thought he had it back on track. He lost speed, never stopped tricking. But it looked like he was back on track until going deep on the front flip into that whale tail and having barely enough speed to get out of that whale tail, but still tricking. Riders now seeming to have a little bit of struggles with speed. The weather might be playing a part in that. David had some really good recoveries there, able to push through, still get tricks in while he was making his way down. But that. A little bit of coming up short on that big step down right there. That could not have felt good. So we hope to see him able to get back up from that crash right there. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing these, these diagrams. We set about seven meters tall for the start drop. And we showed that diagram for the fact that that structure on that whale tail is 14 feet up. All that speed coming down. When you do that step down, come up short on the landing. That's a long way to fall. Luckily, it looks like he's wearing a lot of pads. Hopefully that was able to dampen the blow a little bit. But let's look back at how he saved it a couple times before finally getting off. This one right here, I thought for sure he was coming up short. He looked a little low on speed, but landed perfect at the top. A lot of experience, knows when to push through. Watch how low he goes right here. And it was surprising that he still went for the trick out so low on the back tire, you're going to lose a lot of speed. Not able to land two tires and pump. He pushes through that backflip, but right here he realizes it's not going to be enough distance. Oh. This is the scariest feeling right here, knowing that you're ejecting over the bars. I actually noticed it looked like he hit his visor on his helmet on the front tire on that front flip up as well, which may have slowed down his rotation a little bit. It looks like a sore foot, perhaps. With David like... Godziak up and walking, that's great to see. After a big crash like that, it's going to be interesting to see if he's able to take that second run. He might need to lick the wounds a little bit, but he's got not very much time. If you consider we drop our second runs, reverse start order. 
But we still have one competitor to take their first run, and this is the guy that everybody has been waiting for. So much buzz around the run that won Crankworx Rotorua earlier this year. Many riders calling it the best run in the history of slopestyle mountain biking. said it was the best run ever. <laughs> Do you agree on that? Yeah, I don't really remember the run. Oh, wait a minute. There was no pedal slip, there was no over rotate, under rotate, just everything was perfect. So it was just like. I don't really like the term of like the best slopes I run ever. I mean, I, that run was definitely not exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, I'm super happy with the run, but there's stuff definitely that I would like to improve on. Till that point, it was the best slopes I run ever. But <laughs> today in practice, I saw him doing an even more insane run. I feel like every time I'm seeing him, he's improving still, even if he's already in the future. <laughs> um, to me, if Emil does the best one he can do, right now, no one can beat him. <laughs> and that's true. I'm not telling it because you're here. <laughs> Emil is on another level now. He's gonna show even more this week. And even today I saw something from him that I'm not gonna say, that you're probably gonna see live. Well, it's not hard to identify greatness when it's staring at you in the face every once in a while in a sport, something really special happens. And in the sport of slope style mountain biking, that thing is Emil Johansson. Pretty sure everybody in the world feels like his Rotorua run was the best slope style run ever. There's only one person I've ever heard say it wasn't. It's the one person who knows there's more in the tank, the man himself. It's really, really exciting to hear what the riders are saying about what they've already seen him do in practice. That's apparently better than that run that shook the slope style mountain biking world six months ago. I don't know how a rider like him, well there is no rider like him, I don't know how he picks what his run's going to be. He has so many things he can do, so many things he's capable of, and we've seen some sneak peeks of what he was doing at the Audi 9's competition, and yeah, he was completely blowing minds. He posted about three different runs that were some of the most Super insane heck. runs I've ever seen to this day. So I think we are in for a treat right here. Anytime this kid is healthy and dropping in on course, he's gonna put on a clinic. I mean, this is a show right here. This is the moment where you start to get goosebumps because it's a special moment. Anytime Emilio Hansen is about ready to take to a slope style course. Let's hear what he's saying. Yeah, I can see the stuff going like crazy. Emil talking about wind right now. And that's the weird thing about these courses sometimes, is they are strung out pretty long, so when it looks like the flags aren't blowing up top, they may be ripping down below. Oh, man. I mean, this is the windiest we've seen since Paul Kudera was standing in the start tower. This guy right here knows whatever run he has planned, he can execute it when given the opportunity. But he's also smart enough to know that it would be foolish to drop in while the wind is howling. 
and add an extra variable to the degree of difficulty that he's obviously already considering. So we see there in that on-screen graphic, it says the wind is about 11 miles per hour. There we go, it calms down, and Emil Johansson is on course. I have no idea what to expect with this run right here. Oh, that he looked <laughs> like a front flip bar spin to tuck no hander right there. Huge amplitude going out of frame. Oh. 360 downside tail up on the cannon, almost losing it, but Whoa. still able <laughs> to do the 360 windshield wiper on oh. the hill. Opposite oh. truck driver to opposite downside tail up. No way. What the? A finger whip, I think that's what you call that. Oh. No. Come on. Truck driver Hold to downside to tail up. Oh. Opposite oh, <laughs> to bar. <laughs> oh, I'm just laughing when I watch him yes. ride because it looks so fun. Okay, this is the one guy in the field who can have bobbles, and it doesn't <laughs> matter because his run is so far beyond what anybody else is doing. I was just thinking, keep going, keep going. It doesn't matter. Yep, that was a classic <laughs> Emil run right there. I'm not even sure if his heart rate is up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that'll do. I think he's content. I, I'm just so happy to see that he did not give up. He has these little errors doing the craziest tricks in the world, and he just keeps pushing. I can't believe he made that one all the way through. He did get the front flip bar to tuck. We need a 90.34 to go into the lead. Oh, gosh. That Look was at this. Almost deadly right there, but that 360, I love the way he climbs onto the end of that 360 windshield wiper. That was opposite. Ridiculous. Opposite. Truck driver to opposite down. Rip. Grabbing the seat before the tail up on that. Move up into the whale tail right there. <laughs> there was nothing stock about that run. Every single move was a banger. Even the flat drop flip, which is something we see other riders doing. It's something we haven't seen from him in a Crankwork Slope Style event. We saw him doing that in the Audi 9s event a couple weeks ago. And we, also, we also saw the, uh, the trick that he did out of the whale tail. He was hinting at that at Audi 9s. Now, everything you just saw right there was in his unnatural direction, meaning he's spinning his opposite direction, throwing the bars the opposite direction. How do you keep going after that? Doing the tail up in the opposite direction, coming up short and still going. I haven't seen him do that yet. That's a Matt McDuff special right there. So just a tail up up or just a Superman C grab up would be kind of stock in 2020, but he comes up with a way of Eliminating any stock moves from this run, this is ridiculous. <laughs> that is so ridiculous, and we're so used to seeing him do things that blow minds that that kind of just like laps my memory on how crazy that run was right there. That's how it was in Rotorua. -Roto. I mean, you forget he did truck it down with out of the whale tail there. It's a big move on a jump, but he does it out of the whale tail. And here we go. Not just the opposite three whip, he squeezes that bar in. Come on. All right, judges, give me the score. <laughs> I've got a pretty good idea where he'll be sitting, but we'll wait and see. It's kind of just like, all right, well, by how much? What are they going to give him? <laughs> and what are the other riders going to have to do? So the score to beat, a 90. Thomas Lemoyne is currently in first place. And here's the score for Emil Johansson. A 94 goes into the lead by four points. That slow-mo shot of him coming up short, if you just showed me that, there's no way you would be able to convince me that he kept going. <laughs> I mean, to do that run, knowing that there was some wind in the air as well, knowing that it was hard enough in perfect conditions. You know, this guy has battled through so much adversity with health it's nice to finally not be talking about that anymore but when he experiences adversity in the form of wind he just pushes right through all right so the score to beat held by emil johansson 94 every rider has been giving one run everybody gets one run more to go in the crankworks innsbruck slope style stick around i don't think we're done yet <laughs> Second, start. Yeah, 
Pump up your tires for the Bike Channel on Red Bull TV. And check out the best live events, feature films, and shows. Download the Red Bull TV app for free. And sign in to watch all of our content offline. Download the app now. Ready for a ride in style? A free ride mountain bike film combining progressive riding with cutting edge filmmaking. Once you start something, you gotta go all the way in. It's such a satisfying feeling. It's really hard to explain. A film oozing with the effortless style of some of the most talented riders of the Coastal Crew. Motive, now available on Red Bull TV. He is one of the best street BMX riders in the world. Courage Adams. Born in Nigeria and raised in Spain, he discovers his roots and rides with the legendary Lagos BMX crew. For me, BMX is just something I really, really love. Encouraged. Now available on Red Bull TV. Fear. A constant companion that even the mountain bike elite have to deal with. Your mind just starts kind of playing tricks on you because you can't do anything. Three, two, one, go! Delve deep into the psyche of the athletes. And get to know one of their biggest driving forces. Reverence, a journey into fear. Available from October 28th on Red Bull TV. Two freestyle world champs turn their backs on the racetracks. Martin Söderström and Emil Johansson. It's just cool to be riding. <laughs> Team up to let the good times roll and the good vibes flow. Ride with the Swedes. Now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to the Crankworx Innsbruck Slope Style. After 14 runs, we're sitting exactly where we figured we would be at this point. The man to beat, Emil Johansson, scored a 94 with a run that was mind-blowing, not only because of the tricks that he chose, but the fact that he was able to keep going. Dropped in during the wind, came up short a few times, but did not let that stop him. One of the best runs we've ever seen. I think they that should be the drinking game. Every time Emil drops and we say that, it seems like we're saying that every time he drops in the last couple seasons. I think anytime he's on his bike, amazing things happen. But we saw a lot of good stuff in run number one. We saw some, some, some surprises. Timothy Bringer came in really hot right off the start. And uh, we saw some upsets as well. So definitely looking forward to this re-rack into run number two. Well, we have Emil Johansson on headset right now. And the big question I want to ask you, Emil, is we know we saw you waiting to drop for the wind. We saw you come up so short, but somehow keep going, get all the tricks you wanted. Were you feeling any headwind there? Is that the reason why you came up short on one of those jumps? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's been a constant struggle with uh, conditions during the past few days. The first day, the course was super slow running, a lot of soft spots, and the, the wet dirt just kept creeping up and it just kept going like that and today is actually the first day when the course is kind of consistent but it's also the first day where we had to have a lot of wind so uh, this course is going a bit in all directions with the hips and stuff so it's kind of hard to predict how it's gonna be in the air and for the bonolog I thought it was gonna have a lot of headwind but it ended up being kind of sidewind so I had more speed than I should have had just because I thought I would get caught up in the wind and then that led to me not getting over to hit properly and then soft spot in that landing, not getting over the next jump properly where I kind of knocked myself and it's a, it's a lot of factors that goes into a run on a day like this. So when you're sitting in the start gate and you feel that wind blowing, are you looking down course and seeing which direction it's blowing and possibly changing up what you had in mind for your run? Definitely. I mean. 
you got to be smart because on a day like this, we don't even know if it's going to be a second run, to be honest. Uh, with the conditions, it's been raining since almost the first rider draft. It's been going back and forth. So you got to be conscious <laughs> on what you're risking and trying to get all the way down the hill is uh, key to get a score that you're kind of happy with. And uh, the conditions are definitely making everything a lot harder today. And it's, uh, it's a lot of risk to send it when it's windy and you don't know how it is and up top we can't even see the middle of course now because there's a big 10 in a way so you can only see a flag at the bottom so it's a lot of factors and it's a lot of stuff you got to be conscious about and uh, yeah it's really difficult today as if that run wasn't ambitious enough, the conditions made you really work for it and you put it all together. That was a sight to be seen. Congratulations on Thank stomping that much. run and enjoy yeah. watching the rest of these runs right now. We'll see if that just holds on to the top spot. Congrats on yeah. putting it together. Finger crossed. So all the riders out there enjoying that run from Emil Johansson, but all of them also enjoying their time spent in Innsbruck. It's a great place to hang out, great place to ride. Let's take a look at how competitor Paula Zabasa is enjoying her time in Innsbruck. When I was about four, my parents put me on a BMX race and basically a year later I started racing bikes. Later on we moved to Innsbruck and then I started mountain biking. For food I got a burrito from Makeda. It's uh, probably my favorite place to eat here in Innsbruck. I got some chicken and nacho crackers. Like nacho crackers are my favorite. Nacho crackers. <laughs> I love that Innsbruck has this kind of vintage, old-school touch to the city. It's just amazing and then I have a quick session at the skate park. Having awareness for young riders and girls, getting them into our sport is so important for me. It's important that women and men have the same prize money. We are doing the same track, riding the same jumps, doing everything with men do. I'm really stoked that Crankwork has now women in speed and style. I like the Oslo Arm Trail. It has gotten pretty rough over the last couple of years. It's now more enjoyable for me than a bike parkish track. I love to live in Innsbruck and it's probably the place where I want to stay for the rest of my life. As you can see there, a great destination if you're planning a European vacation. And you know, if you're planning a European vacation and you're watching Crankworks, the odds are you're the type of person who's gonna bring their bike. Plenty of trails out there in Innsbruck to enjoy. So make sure you include Innsbruck on your travel plans when when you're making a trip over there, it's, who knows when the next time we'll be making a trip over there is, but last year I was able to bring my bike up on the lift, ride some of those trails, and you know, even after slope style here today, we're still gonna have downhill coming up later, and you'll be able to see some of those trails, some of the top downhill racers in the world will be taken to that trail right in the middle of Crankworx slope style Innsbruck right now, and we're kind of just digesting what we saw. We knew that Emil Johansson was going to be the last to draw. The big question was, who was he going to be trying to beat? Right now, let's take this opportunity to kind of analyze the top two runs we saw from run number one. So on the left side of your screen there, Tyler, Emil's run right side of the screen, the second place run from Thomas Lemoyne. So we kind of had different approaches here. Lemoyne did sneak some big tricks in, but he was relying more on just perfect execution on everything. And obviously Emil was looking for that too. And he did have moments that everything was so perfect. And I can't believe that I, you can't even pick that run apart, but just slight mistakes due to the conditions, the wind speeds running slow. And Lemoyne is landing everything so perfect, but the combos and opposite tricks that Emil was sneaking into that run right there are obviously the reasons that set him apart from the rest of the field. Yeah, when you sync those runs together, you realize how strikingly similar they are. It's just the added level of difficulty that Emil is putting in there. But another thing that really just jumps out is how smooth Lemoyne was right there. It's kind of crazy. Like if there was any slip pedals from Emil, instead of just cases and overshoots, Lemoyne would have been even closer there. 94, the score to beat from Emil Johansson. Thomas Lemoyne, four points back there in second place. Everybody getting a second run when we come back from the break. This is Crankworks Innsbruck Slopestyle. 14 more runs to go. 
Well, let's hope for no wind. Prepare your bike. Visualize the track. Keep your blood pumping. Don't come around here feeling weak. Like a record on rotation, I'll leave you hit. Can't incriminate myself, so let me plead the fifth. I ain't saying where I'm going, like I ain't got a list. Passport stamped out, it's just like the travel. You wanna see more in the world than Big Apple? Sad song, funeral nights, and street chapel. So we don't give up. Stop. Stop. Every mistake is a new opportunity. Forgive yourself for not being perfect and be awesome. Keep your grip loose for the wildest rides. Brandon Semina, Kai Kobe, and Bill Johansson has won. Yes, the Bike Channel on Red Bull TV. Rob Warner. I'm taking the best young athletes on a quest to ride the world's greatest trails and meet the people who live in some of the wildest places on earth. Never had myself down as an Attenborough type. Yes. Ah, get off! <laughs> <laughs> the first sight of the Himalayas. You know, lions take the weakest and slowest rider. Oh, my word! Rob Warner's Wild Rides, now available on Red Bull TV. Anywhere around here you can get a cappuccino. When you have found your passion, time and space seem endless. A cinematic journey from lush coastal jungles to otherworldly landscapes. Join Brandon Semenuk, Emilio Hansen, and friends in an extraordinary adventure. Return to Earth, now available on Red Bull TV. Biggest event BMX has ever seen will happen next year in Tokyo. Here we go. Look at the height. Join the BMX elite on their hunt for precious points to represent their country for the first time. These last seconds are the ones that matter most right here. Clockwork 60 Fees BMX Freestyle. Now available on Red Bull TV. We're right in the middle of our fireworks show here, live from Innsbruck, Austria, the Crankworks Innsbruck slope style. And yeah, the uh, the last run we saw was, was kind of like, hopefully not the grand finale because we would love to see everybody take 14 more runs, one run each again here. Emilio Hansen, 94 is a score to beat. A little bit different vibe out here, obviously, with circumstances and local guidelines being adhered to, there's no crowd, which is definitely making it a different competition, but they are sending it nonetheless. When I think about Crankworks Innsbruck, I think about how high the energy always is and how that really fuels the riders. So it's really interesting to see these riders digging deep and finding the motivation to drop these groundbreaking runs for the audience tuning in at home. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Cam McCall, alongside Tyler McCall. We also are broadcasting in different languages, Russian, Japanese, German, and Polish. So if you'd rather not listen to us blabber on in English, make sure to find those, those feeds in your language. So many countries represented here. We got Diego Caverzasi from Italy on screen with a lot of work to do. He only made it through three features of his first run, so that's why he will be the first rider to drop. Reverse start order here, so Emilio Hansen, who's the rider to beat, will be the last to drop. But Diego, he's got so many huge combos, yeah. and I'm really hoping we're going to be able to see him make it to the final Where? jump, Tyler. Okay. Huh. We'll be good. He's got some signature yeah, we'll tricks. Yeah, I, I would like love to see to I saw now. a hint of him warming up to one of them in practice on the last jump. All right. 
So Diego covers Ozzy, a rider who borrows inspiration from a lot of different sports and incorporates them into his slope style runs. Tricks from freestyle moto, tricks from BMX. He's always got something up his sleeve. He's one of the riders who choreographs his runs, shares it with the judges to get their feedback, their input. And so you know when he wasn't able to get top to bottom on that first run, he's geared up to make it happen now in his final opportunity in a year where there's not very many slope style competitions. This moment means a lot for a young slope style competitor. Diego Caverzasi doing exactly what Emil did earlier, waiting for the wind to lull out and when we talked to Emil, it wasn't as cut and dry as, well, there's a headwind, so I came up short. He was actually overcompensating, thinking the headwind was going to be more than it really was. So he overshot a feature, which then caused that chain reaction of coming up short on a feature. So much to think about, aside from choreographing your run, which is what Diego's going over in his head right now. You got to think about adjusting that run based on speed changes on the course. You see that Max's flag waving. Now it's been a little while since we've seen Diego on a podium, but we can't forget that he has all the tricks that can get him there. He has the twisters, the backflip cliffhangers, the cash rolls, he can front flip just about anything. So definitely a rider that is capable of putting together a worthy <laughs> run today. Well, just think about a couple seasons ago when we were talking about, you know what, Diego covers that. He's a world-class rider, doesn't have any sponsors. Look at his jersey now, making it happen. Wine sponsors. I think he's got a zipper sponsor. Just living the dream. All the components you need to build a bike. All the hard work paying off. How much time I have? All right. Because it's... So one benefit of having no crowd is we're able to get a clear sound signal. We can hear Diego asking how much time he has. We hear officials telling him as much time as you need. Obviously nobody wants him to drop in when the flags are that active. Wind is the absolute last thing you want to see, hear, and feel when you're in the start gate for a slope style run. I swear there is some sort of curse that knows when finals day is and brings in a little bit of wind, even when it's not called for. But that's just something that the riders have to deal with, have to adapt to. But at the same time, we're not going to have them drop if it's not safe. First two features heading one direction on the course and then a sharp right hand turn and then facing completely different angle. I know I can go to there so and then you have to adjust up. considering what direction the wind's coming <laughs> from two and then realize that as soon as you turn, that angle is going to change. Uh. A lot to calibrate. I think he was just saying he knows he can get the first two underway, but then once it changes to a side wind, that's where the question marks are. It looks like it might be calming down. I mean, luckily we've seen Paul Kudair have a long wait at the top. We've seen Emil have a long wait at the top. And both of them found their window. It's crazy when you finally feel the wind subside, all of a sudden you just get that burst of like, oh, it's a go time moment. So let's see what our on-screen graphic says about the wind right now, 11 miles per hour. I know that when we're checking the wind forecast to go riding, we're always kind of looking at that 10 mile per hour threshold, anything 10 miles per hour or more is 
going to be uncomfortable. You love to see those single digits on the wind forecast. So <laughs> Forty nine degrees. We're not usually doing slope comps in the Alps in October. <laughs> Things are a little bit different here. <laughs> Diego Caverzasi weighing out the options here. You know, we did hear from Emil when we had him on headset. He was talking about some of the strategy when you know it's kind of a windy day. Everything goes out the window that you typically talk about as slope style strategy. You say you get a, a smooth one in the bag and then improve upon that in the second run. But when it's a day that has a little bit of wind in the forecast, you don't know if everybody's going to get their second runs. And it's something that's going to behoove you to just go for a first run. That's exactly what Emil did. I mean, that was only a half an hour ago, and the wind increased since then. But look at this, Diego Caverzasi dropping in. He's tired of waiting. Looks yeah. like he's going for it for run number two right here. The straight flip on the second feature. Oh, too bad. Diego's going to wave off this run. <laughs> Issues in the first run, and now wind in the second run. That's a tough pill to swallow, training so hard for this moment and then catching these conditions. But look at that. I would say one for the crowd. There is no crowd, so that's one for us. One for all of you joining us from wherever you are in the world, logged into Red Bull TV. Diego Caverzasi, obviously disappointed not being able to put down the run of his dreams, but just showing the level he's on, being casual with that cash roll on the final feature. He threw a he's few things that. in there, even yeah. though it was a throwaway that was like, oh, wow, <laughs> okay. So that's the level you're on. His game is on point. Conditions didn't line up for him. One of my favorite people to watch on course. You never know what he's going to do. So we hope to see him back at the next comp, whenever that may be. Well, let's see, who do we have loaded up in the start gate now? It looks like it might be Paul Kudera. Yep, Paul Kudera, another rider, the first rider we saw in run number one who had wind issues. Flags are looking pretty mellow at the top right now, but that doesn't mean that they're not blowing at the bottom. Paul Coudere from France, if you like to be yeah. blown away by web videos, go look up his name. All right. Some of the most creative moves that have ever been done on a mountain bike have been done by this guy. Half cab flares. I don't even know how you describe his latest stunt. Yeah, yeah, Standing yeah. on one foot off a drop and flinging himself into a backflip from a standstill. But he had issues on Holy the shit. second jump in the four pack, trying to link oh. the Cork 720, his regular and opposite directions. More of the same here from the wind. What do you think? Do you think Diego felt a lull or do you think he just went, ah, I just got to get off of this perch? It's hard to say. We just saw a prime example of what the wind can do. We were saying the flags weren't moving. It looked calm. And then out of nowhere, big gust came. And that can happen when you're midair on one of these big features. And uh, it's definitely not something you want to happen. Oh, fuck. Well, it's not that entertaining to stare at somebody at the top of the slope style course waiting on the wind. So I think this would be a great time to join in one of the most entertaining people I know on two wheels, Nikolai Rogakin. Hey, there he is. What up, Nikolai? What's up, what's up? How you guys doing? It looks windy out there in Innsbruck, but the guys are shredding anyway. Yeah, Nikolai, I'm sure you're partially wishing you were out there because you love that course, but I'm sure you're not jealous of the situation Paul's hanging out in right now. The top of that course with so much wind. 
I mean, yeah, it, I miss the vibes for sure. It looks like the boys are riding out there. They're having a good time. The weather does not look that good. It looked pretty good in the beginning, but now it's gotten real windy. And I know well as well as anyone that that course out there in Innsbruck gets real sketchy in the wind. So Paul's probably not feeling too great right now. But uh, sick to see all the boys riding together and uh, have an event again finally. It's It's really sick to watch. When you're riding a contest, you're the rider who seems to fuel off of the crowd the most. What do you think it's like for these guys dropping in, doing these hammer runs without getting fired up by the roar of the crowd? I mean, without the crowd, it's definitely a bit different. You know, that that's like definitely the, the electric vibe of the crowd on finals day it, what, is what makes uh, those days so special but honestly it reminds me a little bit of, of qualifying days because we have qualifying days at some contests where the riding level is still getting gnarly and the riders are still hungry like for a spot in the finals so still a lot of pressure is still still hard to make those runs happen and still really stoked when you uh when you make that run happen so it's a bit of a qualifying vibe out there but uh it's uh it's just rad to to have an event again and uh, it's probably crazy for them being exclusive up there the only ones up there on the mountain riding pretty sick yeah what do you make of that run that we saw from emil it scored a 94 i kept waiting for you to run in and just jump on him for the big celly were you bouncing around your room at home <laughs> honestly i couldn't believe it when he had that big case on the hip and then somehow held it together. I'm like, this guy is legitimately unstoppable. Like no mistake or anything he can make can stop him. Like he's relentless. He's so good. He's so dialed. He's on a different level and he's just, uh, he just seems so, so determined to do that run and nothing can stop him. And that's just so impressive, especially in conditions like this. He had to wait around ages before his run, it's all windy, all cold, but, uh, still managing to just absolutely make it happen, which is, is beyond impressive. It was reminiscent of his run that we saw in Rotorua, and it took so long for us to kind of digest what all the tricks were that he pulled in that run down there in New Zealand. And I feel like it's taking us a long time to digest this one. So with you joining us right now, I think it'd be kind of fun to look back on this run and get your take on it. Oh, yeah. A flat drop flip and the front flip bar to tuck like things we usually don't see from ML. Then this one, which he unleashed in Rotorua, and now he just does with his eyes closed, basically, the three whip down whip, and then the seat grab oh. whip, and then this is just absurd. A truck to down whip on a step down. That's just, oh, we're back in. Paul's dropping. Okay. Look at that. Paul's dropping in, Nikolai. Is, <laughs> yes. He is not holding back either. Let's see if he gets this link board. right here. Come on. Wow! Yes. Oh, oh no. man! No! Oh man! Paul Kudere, everything was looking good. God, that's the most difficult situation. Waiting for win, dropping in, and then he fixed the mistake from run number one. And you know what? Just tiny bit off course. You had a similar situation last year, Nikolai, where you had a ridiculous run going, and it ended one feature earlier than where his run ended. Well, two features earlier. You fell off the cannon log. But what is that like when your dream comes crashing down right there? He's so frustrated, obviously. Yeah, it's the most frustrating feeling ever when the when the run goes wrong in any case. I mean, we just as as riders, you just put so much pressure on yourself to to land the run, and like you just want it to happen so bad. So when it doesn't happen, it just unleashes that rage. And I don't know, we just know how good it feels to get a sick run down the hill and like to push through all those nerves and all that pressure. So when it goes wrong, it's just uh, it's just a rough feeling. But it's part of the game, you know. You gotta got to be able to bounce back up and uh, and look forward to, to the next one whenever that may be. So, I mean, Paul's climbed his way back into the game after being out for a while, and he's uh, he's killing it harder than anyone else. Like, like, he's doing some moves that no one else is doing, as we saw at, like, Audi 9s and stuff. So, yeah, he'll get back out there easy. That's true. That's true. It's such a rush, and it takes so long to get into the, the position of dropping in for a finals run at a crankwork slope style. And you know more than anybody what the feeling is like when you get that euphoria of stomping it. And you know, Paul just wanted that right there. It's been so long for him clawing his way back up onto the scene. 
So unfortunate there for Paul Coudier, but we're looking forward to hopefully seeing him come back strong next season. Let's take a look at who we have dropping in next. All right, looks like Fedco is going to be the next to drop. Fedco made it a couple jumps in before deciding to wave off the run. So hopefully we are going to see decent conditions for Fedco right now. Paul is really making it work when he pulled off track right there. You could see the grass blowing, the tape flapping. But here comes Eric Fedco. Back <laughs> hard spin to tail him. No way. Don't see him do that too often. He struggled with speed on that run number one. 360 yes. downside tail up on the cannon. Things are looking perfect so far. <laughs> Truck driver to tail up, catching early, resetting his feet. He wants it. Oh, oh. oh. holding it together. Eric Fedko, no wow. way. One last <laughs> jump, what's it going to be? 360 oh hard spin to downside tail up to instant claim, no way. That was so impressive. It looked like it was all over. He held it together. And I think that may compete with Emil's run right there. That was super impressive out of Eric Fedko. We saw some new stuff out of him. That was a huge run. With so much downtime between competitions, it's kind of unprecedented to not really know what these riders have been working on until they drop in. Obviously, it all makes sense now why he waved off that first run. He was going for that backflip barsman to tail up on the second feature. We saw him stomp it clean. Let's take a look back at the replay. Definitely need to see a replay of that whole run. It all happened so quick. Now he had really, really smooth execution on everything we saw. So Nikolai, you're a guy who battles it out with riders who really lean heavy on their opposite maneuvers. You've been battling with, with Brandon, with Brett, with Emil. So Eric Fedko is a guy who's thrown in a little bit of oppo here and there, but he's really relying on the big combos and the execution, the extension. Do you think this run is enough to get close to that opposite masterclass that Emil put on? Oh, on, honestly, both, both of those runs are, are super insane. I think uh, the difficulty level of the combos of Emil's run are are bigger, but um, I think Eric held it together a little cleaner in that run. And um, like you said, Eric has a bit of a different style. He does throw oppos in here and there, but he's a guy who relies heavily on like the big extensions, as you saw right there with the big 360 Indian Air Seat Grab, the best in the game for sure. And he's also going pretty insane with the combos, but I mean, he's finishing his run with the truck to down whip while Emma was doing the truck to down whip on the step down, one of the hardest features on course. So I think the judges are going to take the difficulty level into consideration, but uh, we'll see. It's going to be close. That was uh, that was a rad run by Eric. A lot of pressure on him after, after messing up the first run. <laughs> I agree. I feel like the big question here is, can Thomas Lemoyne hold on to that second place? Obviously, huge tricks and huge places for Eric Fedko there. The flip up out of the wheel tail. Hey, there we go. There's the score for Eric Fedko. Pulling it together after not getting a score in run number one. An 88 for run number two. Good enough for a third place. A position he's very, very familiar with. He has a whole collection of slope style bronze medals. Let's see if he can hold on to that podium spot. Just great to see him be patient, hanging out, waiting for that lull window, and then stomping that run. Next rider back up in the start gate, Thomas Janon. If you remember back, he had an issue on the final jump with that cash roll, which is why he's going so early now in the lineup. Hopefully the wind calms down now a little bit more consistently. We saw... We saw Eric Fedko seemingly not being phased by it moments ago. And look at that Maxis flag not even moving now. This is good. All right, Thomas Janon in his second run, dropping in. Another rider that's going to get those opposite tricks into his run right here. So much style in everything that he does. 16. Big combo there with the truck driver to tail it. 
Okay, how will Janon finish? Can he finish strong? He crashed in run number one on the last jump. There we go, stopping that same trick he tried in run number one. Clean run for Thomas Janon, capping it off with that cash roll. Two riders in a row getting top to bottoms after the weather was obviously taking a toll on these riders getting down course. So that is a good thing to see. Thomas Shannon getting a top to bottom run is always a sight to see. So here we go. Look back at the replay, an opportunity to digest this run. Now, if you're worried about wind, you're probably not going to be doing a double tail up on the longest jump on the course. So that hints at improvements here in our conditions. There you go. You said that was your favorite part, Tyler, from run number one. He does it again. Ooh. So basically only one tiny little issue in this run is coming up short, but he definitely didn't let it affect him. He put everything together except for that one jump right to that landing. And there we go, the opposite one-footed Euro, dangling that foot, letting those bars turn down into the rotation. That was complemented by the jump he did before, the regular rotation three table off of the cannon log. Here's one of the big combos in this run, doing it on the hip, the 360 bar spin to tail. This is where he landed perfect in run number one. He came up a tiny bit short here in run number two. Still able to carry that momentum into the Superman C grab into the whale tail. He definitely got redemption on that cash roll at the end. He couldn't have landed that any more perfect. That right there is a unique Thomas Janon trick. He's got to wait till his foot's completely over the top tube doing the one foot can in order to sneak his bars through to get that X up in there. A lot going on. Riding that new Marzocchi DJ Bomber fork. He's been riding it all year, just got released to the public. And uh, he's definitely been loving that thing all year. Well, Janon with a score now. What's it going to be? An 80.33, good enough for six plays. A big smile on the face of Thomas Janon. Salvage the day. So a handful of riders having issues in their first run. We see them drop first as we run second runs in reverse order toward Quato Testa, one of those riders ready when you are. who had issues. Currently sitting in 11th place, obviously looking to improve on that. Torquato Testa, the Italian rider. We saw Diego Caverzasi be the first one to start these second runs and have the most issues with wind. There we go, Torquato on course. Things are looking smooth for him so far in run number two here. Backflip, tuck no hander on the cannon. That's a big move. Oh, wow. Opposite cork 720. Getting a little off track there after that. Oh, he's going to need to finish strong here on the final jump. The cash roll for Torquato Testa puts one through the finish line. That will be an improvement on his first run. A few issues there, not getting exactly what he would have wanted. But I do think that will improve his score. He had some repeat tricks in run number one. He was able to do away with those in run number two. That opposite cork 720 right there was wild. And as you said in run number one, we can only think that he must have been planning to link that to a regular cork 720 on the next jump. Nikolai, I want to ask you, you've competed on this course so many times. Everybody usually practices on straight trick jumps. This course's four pack is hips. Has that been difficult for you in the past? And do you think that catches some of these riders off guard when they're trying to do these big combos? Oh, it definitely catches us off guard a little bit. Those hips, like, they are big hips, like big takeoff, big landing. Luckily, they're not like the most hip they could be. So like, you can kind of finesse and do like a straight trick, just take the ramp at an angle. 
so you can definitely manage it, but it's quite a curveball. You know, in Whistler, every time we got the straight four pack, so we just have no stress about that in previous years. But here, I mean, the hips definitely uh, gotta gotta be on it and gotta gotta make sure you're you're getting the perfect rotation on the tricks because because uh, those are tough for sure. But it's unique, you know, makes the course more unique. And, yeah, uh, kind of separates everyone. Yeah, it's kind of a piece of the personality of this event. It's the one event of the year where if you're like Tom Eistead and you have a four-pack in your training compound, you go, all right, well, we're in the big leagues now. Not only do I have to do those tricks that I've been practicing, i got to make sure that I connect to those landings on the right angle. Tom Eistead with a really good showing in his first run, some room to improve. And based on watching his most recent video part, he's been putting in all the work. He wants to climb out of that 11th position right now, try to get up into something in the top five. Based on what we've seen from him in practice and in his first run, I think he's got what it takes if he lines it all up. Waiting for a break in the wind right there. So hard to know when the timing is right, but Tom is dropping in for run number two. So clean on that first. Backflip off the start drop. Whoa, there it is again, the front flip off the cannon. Huge cork 720 on the first hip. Landing nice and smooth into that cash roll. I love that link right there. I think the judges do as well. Oh, having some problems with the whale tail. Huge super flip for fun there. A little improvisational moment. You know, his first run was better. He finished real strong in the first run. Some great moments in that run right there, though. His riding is on point. Just a couple holes that you know he wanted to fill in that run. Speed seems to be a big issue today. But that cork 720 right there. Nice and clean. After the front flip off that cannon, I think that's got to be one of the more scary things you could possibly do off of that. Yeah, now I'm thinking back, remembering his first run, it was basically, he kind of nailed it, and he would have needed to improve the tricks on this run to improve the score. Could have done something bigger on the second jump, but I definitely think that he'll be holding on to that first run score because his first run was real good. There we go, yep. First run, 69.66 will stand. 11th position will be the best that Tom Eisted can finish. Crazy to think that that first run just sits you in 11th. All right, well, the 94 at the top of the leaderboard right there is the run from Emil Johansson. Let's take a look back at this run again, this time with a little bit of fancy analysis. The three down whip off of the cannon, the windshield wiper. We saw him doing that in Rotorua, but now he's doing it on a hip. We just spoke with Nikolai Rogakin about how much more difficult it is to do those tricks. And it's only six months ago. We've seen footage of Emil doing that trick on a lip down. Very impressive riding from him. He obviously sets his bike up very specifically for slope style, the best in the game right now. Let's take a look and how he sets up that Trek ticket ass. Looks like we're gonna try to get this run in from Alex Alenko while the wind is calm. Opposite 360 to start things off right there. Looking a little low on speed. <laughs> Never mind, pushing through, landing that front flip perfect. Yeah, oh, wow. Big move right there. 360 tail up on the cannon. Able to hold things together. Things are looking really clean for Alex Alenko here so far. What's it going to be on the last jump? Oh, no way. I feel like he brushed up a couple of those moments that he could improve on in the middle of the run, but then finished with a straight flip. 
Huge front flip for him on that second feature though. Riding looking very on point. Things were done with great execution. Playing to what the judges like to see with the opposite tricks. His opposite 360s really remind me of Logan Pete. The 360 tail up on the cannon is another thing we saw from Logan Pete. Miss seeing him on tour. Shout out to Logan Pete. Great to see some of his style being represented through Alex Alenko right here, but Alex Alenko also throwing some of his own unique flavor into his riding as well. So Alex Alenko is sitting on a 75.33 from run number one. He'll hold on to that ninth position right now, not improving on that score in run number two. So Alex Alonco, respectable two runs there, not enough to shake up the top five. And it looks like Lucas Knopf is warming up. There we go, we got some, some ghetto gloves going on. Oh, Lucas Hooper this time, here we go. So Lucas Hooper, strong first run. Let's take a look back at what he's looking to improve upon. So Lucas Hoopert had a great showing in run number one. Here we're seeing a cash roll. And we thought this one was going to lose it at the end there. You see him eyeballs on the landing, wondering if he's going to come in in the right spot. Now he landed a little rear wheel heavy, but he had the wherewithal to lock up the rear brake. You can see his finger on it there on the right hand, bringing that front wheel down and holding it together. Now that could have been dis disastrous. Able to hold on his run. Sat him in a pretty good spot here. I think he's sitting maybe around eighth or ninth place. So now he's got some room to play around with. Eighth place. Lucas Hooper from Switzerland just looking to clean it up a little bit. A great run in his first try. Gonna work on the cleanliness. Here we go, dropping in. We see a lot of potential out of this young rider right here. Huge oh front flip bar has been going so high on that jump right there. Whoa, he's cleaner already. Yes. This run is looking really good. Oh, did he get switch footed there? He did. He had a nice recovery. Had a bit of a crank spin. Look so. The trick level of difficulty in run number one was so oh. high. The way Lucas Hooper would have been able to improve that score would have been to just kind of iron out the kinks in the run, a little bit smoother connections to the landing, less pedaling. Started out strong, was looking to be dusting things off, but missing, almost missing the pedals on that tail whip. And I think he wanted more out of that tail whip as well on the second hip. So he decided to call it, but I think He's really up the level of his trip, trick difficulty since we saw him last. Things were looking cleaner to me in that run. I think that would have been an improvement on this next jump here. If we get a replay of it, you can watch his cranks do a half back pedal. So he's starting out right foot forward. Watch the way he lands. Not a good feeling to have your bike backwards and see your pedals not where you left them. So a good recovery there, landing left foot forward, even though he started right foot forward. But that threw it everything off, <laughs> it turned that run into a throwaway for him. Huge recovery. And the fact that he got his pedal stance back to center before taking off on the next feature as well. So much promise in this young rider. Can't wait to see him next season. Eighth place, not a bad result for the young rider right there. There we go. It's been a long time since we saw Max Fredrickson. He was the first rider to drop and run number one. A spotless run. And if you're Max Fredrickson right now, there's no way you can improve that run by doing the same tricks because it was absolutely flawless. He's going to have to dig a little bit deeper into the trick bag and improve the difficulty level a little bit if he wants to climb out of where he's sitting right now. He's definitely got a deep enough bag to be able to pull something out. Great to see him back at the top of this start gate after such a long hiatus from Crankwork Slope Style. Issues with injuries, issues with points. I feel like that first run right there was exactly what he needed. He's had a bad run. 
the last couple years with injuries and runs not going his way. So that run right there might have been the confidence boost that he needed. He's sitting in seventh place, which is a respectable day for him already. And now he has something to build off of for run number two. We know he has huge tricks. He made that run number one look so easy. So I'm eager to see what he's going to pull out of the bag for run number two right here. If you're enjoying the show from home, make sure to check out all behind the scene images on Instagram with the handle at Crankworks. Share your experience from the couch using the hashtag Crankworks from home. We've got to thank you all for joining us. Of course, we're not packing this arena with fans. The fans are you at home enjoying the sport of slope style mountain biking from the comfort of your couch. And you are in for a treat right now as Max Fredriksson from Sweden awaits a lull in the wind to take his second of two runs. Max Fredrickson weighing out his options right now. We're taking hints as to how long it's going to be until we see him drop. Couple little cues here, the flags are very active. He decided to turn off that camera, so I'm gonna think it's gonna be a little bit right now, but we've seen this pattern so far today. Riders playing it smart, deciding not to drop in during the win, and it does calm down. So hopefully that pattern continues but it is so stressful to be up there. Yeah, is it? Nikolai, you've been in this position so many times, whether it be at a slope style competition or at Rampage. I mean, it's gotta be the toughest thing for these guys right now, isn't it? Oh yeah, waiting for the wind is definitely such a <laughs> tough thing for the mental game because you know, you try to like, get all the nerves out of your brain before you get to the start gate. So once you're up there, you know, you're kind of motivated. You're like, come on, let's get it. Let's get after this run. But then if there's wind, you know, you start thinking of all the ways your run could go wrong and all these horrible thoughts, thoughts start like playing through your brain just because that like time that you have to wait. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, just adds that extra pressure and makes it that much harder to be physically and mentally ready to drop. So uh, it's tough, but um, it's also another part of the game. You know, once that, once that wind even gets a little good, you just gotta be be ready to drop and, and see what happens. It's hard to get into that right mindset regardless, but to have to sometimes maybe get into that mindset three or four times before you actually drop. We just saw him turn his camera on, turn it off, and then turn it back on, turn it off. And you know when you hit that button on your camera, you feel like there's a good chance you're about ready to drop. Because I know Max Fredrickson is editing all of his own videos. He doesn't want to have to sit through a whole lot of footage of nothing going on. <laughs> so he throws his arms up in the air right now, watching that flag. Where are you hanging out at right now, Nikolai? I'm actually uh, hanging out in St. George, Utah, riding some uh, some rampage style stuff with uh, Reed and Ethan and DJ. We got a good crew out here. Us, us U.S. boys can't can't make it out of the country right now, so we're all riding together and uh, making the most out of this time. Yeah, well, if you can't leave the country, you might as well hang out in the desert because it's one of the best spots in the world for riding. It's very unique, and we're lucky to have that out there. But when you found out that this was going to take place, this event, was there any thoughts of trying to figure out how to get a visa or anything? Oh, most definitely. I was definitely in talks with uh, Crankworks on, on uh, coming over because obviously Innsbruck is an incredible event, one of my favorites every year and uh, an iconic course and all the boys enjoy it. Like watching this right now, it's it's killing me to not be there riding with, with these guys. But um, I mean, it, in the end, it turned out that uh, I was probably just going to get turned around at the border or it's going to get complicated. It's just such a crazy time right now. And uh, the USA is not not uh, dealing the best with the pandemic. So it's, it's a pretty dangerous time to travel and uh, could have led to some weird things. So 
just sitting out at home and uh, really hoping that things get back to normal and that we can have some competitions for uh, for, the, for the near future because uh, we all miss it. I miss it heavy. And we miss having you out there, so we're stoked to be able to have you join in our broadcast team today. And I got some good news for you. I'm watching the body language of Max Fredrickson. The camera's on. He's drying off the sweat from the palms. Max Fredrickson dropping in. Let's see if patience pays off for Max Fredrickson right here. I want to see him improve on run number one so bad. Oh, man, he is feeling that wind. You can hear him call out. He landed good off of the first drop and got a good pump and pedal and still just barely made the big dirt-to-dirt -dirt second feature. So Max Fredrickson, who had a spotless first run and was looking to improve the difficulty of the trick choices, is going to have to settle for that first run score. Difficult, windy conditions providing challenges, but great to have Max Fredrickson back on the scene. Conditions like this are kind of like a game of Russian roulette. It can be calm at the top, you decide to drop, and you have no idea what's actually going to happen. And that's what we're seeing today is the conditions are changing so quick. It can be calm one second, windy another. We saw Paul Kudere have some troubles with the wind, and then we've seen other riders drop after him and seem to get lucky. So you just never know. It's a bummer to see Max Fredrickson get affected by the wind right there. So we're taking a look at some replays from the Cannon feature right now. The Cannon feature is one that's been on slope style courses for many, many years. And for a long time, it's it was a feature where you'd see easier tricks, but now you're seeing those huge combos going down off of the cannon. Last year, Nikolai, you went for, was it a cash roll off of the cannon log? Um, yeah, it was a cash roll off the cannon that got me. Uh, just went a little bit too far, right hand blew off and uh, just sent me onto the ground. So it's a tough maneuver, scary maneuver because of how narrow the takeoff is and how much of a car was required for a cash roll. But uh, yeah. It's crazy how much the the level has gone up since cannons first started to be incorporated onto slope stock courses. You're seeing some of the biggest combos on them now. It's 11 foot drop on that cannon. Obviously, for so many reasons, more difficult doing those tricks off a cannon than a jump. Lucas Knopf dropping in for his second run. The wind playing nice at the moment. Yeah. Sitting in sixth place, sticking with that backflip bar spin the tail up on that big second feature right there, which is a huge move. Two, going with the double whip. I think he had a triple whip on that in run number one. On to the whale tail. Opting not to do a trick on oh, He wanted the bar out of that three whip, didn't he? So he knows that this is not going to be as good as run number one. So he's going to stick with that run one score. Guaranteed a sixth place, not a bad day for Lucas Knopf. Still getting that backflip bar spin and tail up on the biggest jump on course. In the wind, clearly he's been doing some homework. He's got that trick on lock. Things were looking similar to run number one until that jump right there. Still a double tail up, which is a great maneuver, but in run number one, it was a triple tail up, so that would have been pretty hard for him to make up for in order to get a higher score. And watch him catch pedals here. I think he was hoping for the bar spin. What do you think? Oh. Yeah, looks like, oh, you can't throw the bars if your feet aren't on. And he was struggling to find that back pedal. So Lucas Knopf hanging out with that 83 from run number one. Fifth place will be the best that he can do today. Really respectable result if he's able to hold on, but we still have a handful of riders to go. Definitely a solid day for Lucas Knopf. I think that's one of his best finishes that we've seen so far. So he's getting some really good points right there. And I'm sure we'll be seeing him at the next stop. So if you remember early on in the day, Tim Bringer, he was the fourth rider to drop. And that run was so banger. We still haven't seen him take his second run. 
So that's going to be something to look forward to right now. 94 is the score to beat held by Emil Johansson. A run that I'm sure the internet's already talking about right now. A run that was packed full of tricks in classic Emil style tricks that seem impossible, but somehow he pulled them off in these difficult conditions. A little bit of wind, a few more riders to go. The Crankworks Innsbruck slope style stick around. Two freestyle world champs turn their backs on the racetracks. Martin Söderström and Emil Johansson. It's just cool to be riding. <laughs> Team up to let the good times roll and the good vibes flow. Ride with the Swedes. Now available on Red Bull TV. For the UCI mountain bike elite, second place is not an option. They like winning. That's what champions do. Forgive yourself for not being perfect and be f***ing awesome. Get inside the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. Fast Life Season 3. Now available on Red Bull TV. My father was shot down in the Vietnam War. And ever since his remains were identified, I've been planning an expedition to search for the place where his plane went down and to discover the circumstances surrounding his death. Ultra endurance mountain biker Rebecca Rush on the trail of her father's fate. No way. Blood Road. It's one of the most popular outdoor sports. From its early beginnings to the creation of major events and disciplines. Rolling with the current legends. Everything you need to know about rules, history, and terminology. The ABC of mountain biking. Now available on Red Bull TV. When you have found your passion, time and space seem endless. A cinematic journey from lush coastal jungles to otherworldly landscapes. Join Brandon Semenuk, Emilio Hansen, and friends in an extraordinary adventure. Return to Earth, now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back, slope style action, day two of competition from Crankworks Innsbruck. A little bit of snow on those hills. We're usually not hanging out in Innsbruck in October, but hey, we'll do whatever we can to bring you slope style mountain bike action from Crankworks. We've got three or four more riders left, depending on whether or not David Godzik is in condition to take his run. But this guy turned a lot of heads earlier today, Tim Bringer. He's the guy I picked as somebody who could shake things up a bit if he put it all together. And he did exactly that in his first run. I believe he's sitting in fourth place right now. He's in an interesting spot. This would be his best finish in a Crankworks to date. If things stayed the way they were, will he try to improve on that or will he be content with the fourth place? Yeah, you know what? I think he's a go for it type of rider. I think he's got such a deep bag of tricks. He's gonna try to add to something that he did here in run number one. Let's take a look back at how he got that score good enough for fourth place right now. The only rider we've seen to cash roll that first huge jump after the start drop right there. And the backflip tail up on the cannon, that was a big move to me right there. Crammed a lot into this run, landed super smooth, similar to Thomas Lemoyne, taking very few pedals. I mean, that run was double flip. mental. To think that that run 
is in fourth place right now, just outside of podium contention, is remarkable. It just speaks to the level we're at here in the year 2020. But Tim Bringer, what will he add to that run? Tim Bringer on course. Now this could get exciting and could shake things up. Oh no! Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Bringer laughs it off. Coming up a little bit short of the cash roll, that second feature. He gives the safe sign, completely tacoing his back wheel. That's a big man right there. You do not want to be that back wheel coming up short and sideways. He just cash rolled like a 30 foot jump, came up short, taco to wheel, slid out, and he's just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Nikolai, this reminds me of you hiking back up the course. You'd be trying to ride that bike and put on a show for the crowd. <laughs> yeah, I'd try to drop on that bike for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of promise from Tim Bringer, the 2019 Rookie of the Year on the FMP World Tour. Definitely showing he has what it takes to climb up onto that podium. It's a shame we're not going to get to see him try to improve on that run. But Thomas Lemoyne, one of the most spotless slopestyle runs we've ever seen. Huge combos, not a single pedal stroke taken. Clean landings on all of these features. And this should be a treat to be able to watch him drop in again. Uh, so... I'm Here's a look at how he's got his suspension there's set no up. Limit. Air pressure. No 215 PSI. <laughs> oh, that's the fork. I thought we were talking about tires. It's 3 a.m. here. I'm tired. <laughs> I read that wrong. So, <laughs> that Thomas Lemoyne competes in so many different disciplines here on the Crankworks festivals. He took a bronze medal in the pump track last night, got a couple hours of sleep, showed up, hiked up to the top of this course to practice. All right, we're trying to figure out what's going on right now. Receiving word that there's a chance Let's go, our final two riders. He's trying to get him to do a train. <laughs> <laughs> so if Lemoyne decides to do a, a train run with Emil right here, that will mean that our results are sealed. Sounds like they may be doing that. So, thinking back to how good that first run was from Thomas Lemoyne, it would be tough to add anything to that with less than ideal conditions. You see those flags just wiggling away. He's happy with his run, he's happy with his ranking, and clearly Emil doesn't have much to complain about with his ranking as well. So these guys are going to have some fun right here, give us a show down this course. So the ticket S of Emil Johansson looking good. Custom fork graphics to match the frame. That marble paint job done by Eric Hath. A work of art right there. And I mean, why wouldn't the artist, the slope style riding artist, have a work of art underneath him as he paints us a picture down this slope style course? Look at the flag on kill. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Get this over with. <laughs> you hear Thomas Moyne say, all right, let's get this over with. It's been a long day right here. We've done our job today, put down some ridiculous runs. <laughs> let's have some fun. This is going to be fun to watch. Even these guys' victory laps could get them a good result. They're just so smooth, so dialed. Everything they do looks so fun and so effortless. <laughs> and that's why they're able to do these victory <laughs> runs like this, because they're just on that extra level. Emil Johansson makes it three slope style wins in a row. 2019, he won Joyride. He started out this season in Rotorua with one of the best runs we've ever seen, and he might have beat that just now, making it three slope style wins in a row. It is safe to say the best slope style rider on the planet right now, Emil Johansson. He's picking up another gold medal. The silver going to Thomas Lemoyne. Two medals in two days, and you know what? I'm pretty sure that's Thomas Lemoyne's best finish in a slope style right there, a silver medal.
Not a bad day at the office for these two guys right here. They had some tough conditions with the wind. One of the favorite courses to the riders on the circuit. So we're happy we got to get that show underway. Timothy Bringer really bringing in some heat here. His best result to date with fourth place. Lucas Knopf with a very respectable fifth place. Max Fredrickson back on tour, getting a seventh place. So likely to see him at the next stop. We had some upsets there at the bottom of the screen. David Godziek, we hope he's okay. He had that huge crash coming out of the whale tail. Paul Kudair, things were looking great for him, but the wind just set him a little off course. Diego looking like his riding was on point, but things not quite coming together for him today. All right, well, let's have a word with Emil right now. Emil, in the last three events you've competed on on the Crankworx World Tour for Slope Style, you've won them all. My question is, between that win in Rotorua and the win you just are celebrating right now, how did you spend your downtime during lockdown? Was it full of training or what? Yeah, basically just trying to ride as much as possible, getting advantage of not a lot of travel days this year. Last year was pretty crazy, 160 days on the road, and this year way less and uh, way more time to hang out with friends at home, riding, having fun, and yeah, getting back to what I all do it for, and that's just riding bikes, really. It's got to be fun being able to spend a summer at home in Sweden, not something you generally get to do with a busy schedule. Do you think that played a part in your riding being so on point this year? Uh, I mean, both yes and no, obviously. I mean, coming into this one, I haven't really been in the contest side of things for a while. And to, yeah, to just get back on it and perform today, uh, it felt good knowing that, yeah, I still know what's up when it's contest time kind of you know like when you're just home it's a it's a different vibe and when you're just riding at home like there's a yeah there's always this uh, unconscious side of things uh, that you not really sure about well congrats on the performance today Emil you're on another level and we feel like it's such a treat every time we get to watch you ride so thanks for putting on a show enjoy this victory and yeah. uh, I guess we'll see you next time we get another slope style contest going thanks for coming out my man thank you very much have a good day <laughs> so fantastic competition out there 14 of the world's best slope style competitors coming together against all odds in 2020 to put on a show for us what a fantastic show we'll continue to digest the madness here when we return Welcome back, time to digest the crazy day of slope style. We were just able to bear witness to live from Innsbruck, Austria, Crankworx Innsbruck slope style. Definitely one 
for the record books. Obviously, a little bit different scenario, not the huge crowd we're used to seeing, not all the riders we're used to seeing, but more of the same from what we saw to start the season. Emilio Hansen taking the lead, some spotless riding from Thomas Lemoyne. We're going to take a chance to watch the top three runs right now and really digest. But, you know, some of the things that we were talking about between Lemoyne and Emil, Lemoyne, he's getting those points from just being so precise. But it's those tricks that that Emil Johansson was able to pull off that were elevating him those extra four points. Outside of those top two, third place, let's take a look at that run to start out. The bottom step of the podium belonged to Eric Fedko today, and he did it on his second run. The first run being a complete and total wash after he missed the trick on the second jump. So all the pressure came down to this one, and this is exactly that trademark style you expect, isn't it, Tyler? Eric Fedko becoming the king of consistency, no stranger to the podium now. And his combos just keep getting better and better. And to me, he seems like somebody who could be getting close to that level of Emil, if that even is possible. But a lot of talent with that young German rider right there. He's doing some of those combos that are similar to what you see from Emil, like the 360 bar spin to downside tail. But he's also starting to click some of his technical combos and drag them over to the more difficult features. We saw him do the backflip tail up out of the whale tail. He was going big with a huge combo off of the cannon. So all signs point to the consistent Eric Fedko getting slower to stepping up one more step into that second place spot and hopefully getting a win one of these days on the Crankworx World Tour. Second place going to a guy who has been very busy the last 24 hours. He got a bronze in the pump track just last night, got a few hours of sleep and then back up to the hill for practice for slope style. And look at this, the cash roll on the second jump. We talked about how he's the guy who doesn't pedal and he did not make a liar out of us. I don't think he took one pedal this whole run. Quickly becoming one of the most decorated Crankworks athletes of all time, I would say, especially with a couple Crankworks medals in his bag now. So much bike handling skills and he makes things look so easy. Perfect run there, scored a 90 for Thomas Lemoyne. Silver medal and we're, like we were talking about, Eric Fedko hopefully getting his level to the point where he's going to start stepping up those steps. It's been years that Lemoyne has been biting at the heels and he just keeps playing toward his strengths. He's had some thirds and now getting that second place one step closer to the top step of that podium that we might as well just engrave that top step with Emil's name right now because he's absolutely owning it. We've been tracking his story for years. He went through so many health issues and we just kept thinking, you know, the level that he's on, the stuff that he showed, if we can finally get to see him reach his potential. It took years for him to finally get healthy, but he is there. He won the last three events and this is how he won today. It's impossible to not like this guy from the stories of his health issues to the way he rides a bike. He has not had anything easy and it was not handed to him. But man, his combos, I forgot about that one there. Another new one. We see new stuff out of him every time he rides a bike. I feel like you could take pro athletes from other sports, show them this run and they would be blown away. There's something that's just obviously impressive about these runs even if you're not tracking this sport knowing what tricks are current it's just if you're a human you can tell that if another human packs that much into that amount of features there's something otherworldly about that well wow what a great show crankworks innsbruck slope style has been the second day of broadcast competition live from beautiful Innsbruck, Austria. But we're not done yet. Of course, Cliff Speed and Style Innsbruck presented by GoPro is coming at you in just moments. I wonder if Thomas Lemoyne is going to compete in that one as if he hasn't been busy enough the past 24 hours. See if he can pick up another medal. But that's an event that you usually compete in. So it's going to be fun to have you joining us here for the speed and style, but the slope style was a great show. Final thoughts, Tyler? 
Uh, it's great to see that slope style can still live in 2020. These guys have been doing their homework and uh, not slacking during the lockdowns. However, their lockdowns were in their country. And uh, that was another great show and uh, looking forward to many more in the future. Well, big thanks goes out to the riders for putting on that great show for us. Thank you, Tyler, for joining us. And thank you for tuning in and watching. We got more action to come. Speed and style in just a matter of hours. And then Sunday, it's all about downhill. We'll see you then.